38. Eric LaBelle to kick it off. And there you see Timmy Dwight and Tavian Banks back for the Hawkeyes. And the Big Ten campaign swings into high gear. Back at the goal line with Banks, number 22. Up the middle, Ooh. Banks swatted down at the 23-yard line. And Ryan Driscoll from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, brings the Hawkeye offense out, hoping to cut down on the mistakes that have plagued him. Good running game if they can get Cedric Shaw going. But keep an eye on number 83, split into Harold Jasper. He's a big-time performer. Now, Hal Mady moves into the middle of that offensive line, and he will snap today because of an injury. Over on defense, Jared Iron, 16 tackles, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for his performance against Colorado. And those of you who have followed the Wolverines know that Clarence Thompson is a dandy, a youngster at strong safety. Now Russell, the tight end in motion. This is Shaw on the toss to the short side of the field and a good gain of about seven or eight yards before Ty Law knocks him out of bounds. Dick Vermeil, give the fans an insight into the game plans that the two assistant coaches will try to use here. Well, Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, said they're going to use some change-up formations. They started right then with an extra offensive lineman in the game, an extra tackle, loaded up on the right side to the short side of the field and tossed the ball effectively for the first play of the game. The Hawks come up with a second and one. Double tight end. They use the fullback, and that is Kent Call out of Fort Morgan, Colorado, banging for the first down. What they're doing is they take it, a third offensive tackle and put him inside the tight end. It'll be to the right side of your screen, as we show you here. Great big guy. See, now there's an extra tight end right there. Or, excuse me, an extra big offensive tackle at 275 pounds. They've got to move the defense over and fill that hole just a little bit quicker. Cedric Shaw, a lone setback. The familiar stand-up position for the tight ends. Russell, one of them, going in motion. They're loading everything to the short side. And that time, Michigan was ready as Trevor Price, number eight, came across and broke up the play. Florida in the second half coming on against Ole Miss. And how about that shocker at the half? Wyoming led it 14 to nothing until late in the first half. Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, expected the unexpected here. I don't think he expected to see three offensive tackles on the line of scrimmage. They normally play a field defense. He will adjust. He'll probably slide his defense over one man. If not, he'll kick the secondary around into it. Can't call the lone running back. Call buried by the middle of the defense. Jason Horn hitting him first for the Wolverines, and it'll be third and long, which will force the Hawkeyes probably to put the ball up for the first time. Well, Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, said they'd like to ball control. Hayden Fry said himself, when we've had success against Michigan, we've been successful by maintaining ball control. Hard to convert third and real long against the Wolverines. And Dick Northwestern wow. beating Ohio State with three field goals. Already Wisconsin has lost in East Lansing. Folks, get ready for a wild and woolly Big Ten campaign. Could be a dandy. And here comes Driscoll. Intercepted. And Steve Morrison gives the Wolverines scoring position with his interception out of bounds on the far side. He threw it right to him. It was a middle screen. He's looking to the receiver come from the outside to the inside. Ryan Driscoll threw the, the ball with his arm first, not his eyes. Inside linebacker moving. He's man-to-man -man on it. See, he's locked on all the way. He's actually moving man-to-man -to, -man to be on the running back swinging out. He was going to cover Kent Call if they screened to him. They tried to screen to the wide receiver to the right side of your screen. He just dissects it. Nice job. Eighth interception in his career. Great field position. Great read by Steve Morrison. And now the Michigan Wolverines with a first down inside the Hawkeye 20-yard line. The efficient Todd Collins, one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country. Mercury Hayes comes in motion, and it is Tyrone Wheatley drawing his first start 
and nothing doing as the Hawkeyes gang up on him. So Tyrone Wheatley, number six, moves into the starting lineup today. Jay Foster is the fullback. Joe Marinero returns to the offensive line, coming off an injury. John Runyon is in uniform, but he's not starting here today. Well, when you turn the ball over inside the 20-yard line, you're, you're giving the opponent an 18-yard field to play on. Then they've been doing that for the last couple games, Brent. They've done it eight times and given up five touchdowns. Second and 10 for the Wolverines. Timeout called. The clock was running down. Collins elects to use a timeout. He'll talk it over with the Michigan coaches. Hurry, girls, before Daddy gets up. Big Ten football, and defensively now for the Hawkeyes, Brett Chambers has moved into the starting lineup. John Hartlieb is out with an injury. And Chris Jackson, the starting song, strong safety now for the Hawks. Second and ten following that timeout. There was an early turnover by the Hawkeyes. This is Todd Collins. On a delay with Wheatley, they force him to the middle, and Wheatley to the 11-yard line, and Bobby Diaco bringing him down. John Saunders, how about the Cornhuskers? They got their hands full with the Wyoming Cowpokes today. Absolutely, Brent. As you know, Tommy Fraser cannot play in that game. He has the blood clot behind his knee. It's getting better. They expect him back in a couple of weeks. But today against Wyoming, Brooke Berenger, he had thrown an interception that led to a Wyoming touchdown, but he punches that one in. 21-14, though, Wyoming is on top. Meantime, Wisconsin loses for the second time this season. Daryl Bevel knocked out of the game, separated shoulder. And, John, this is third and four for the Wolverines. Collins in zone! And unable to make the diving catch is Mercury Hayes. He got the coverage he wanted, man-to-man -man coverage. He ran a delay route to the outside. The slot man goes to the corner, Mercury Hayes. He just misses him. A little bit too excited here on his first throw downfield. That was a gimme throw, really. Todd Collins normally throws that accurately and for the score. Field goal time for the Notre Dame hero. Remy Hamilton trots onto the field. He's Jay Remersmall, one-time quarterback who's now a tight end, will put it down. This is a 30-yard attempt for Hamilton. Brent, he's four for four on the season from that distance. Michigan with a field goal after the turnover. Morrison's interception sets up the 30-yarder by Hamilton, 3-0 Wolverines. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Aptiva. It's whatever you want, however, whenever, whyever you want. It's the newest multimedia PC from IBM. 3-0 Michigan over Iowa. The early going here in Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. And Lovell kicking off for the second time. Tim Dwight and Tavian Banks back deep for the Hawks. Dwight, 15 to the 26-yard line, and a good, strong return for the young man from right here in Iowa City. You know, this is a beaten-up Hawkeye team. Jack Arood asked Hayden Fry if injuries have impacted his game plan for the day. Well, we've always uh, had to do something a little unusual against Michigan because they're so well coached fundamentally. Uh, they can make, uh, if you come out in the regular formations that they've been practicing against, uh, you're not going to move the ball very far. If you line up in a standard defense that they're familiar with, you're uh, not going to stop them. So uh, we've always had something a little bit different for Michigan, and certainly with all the injuries and inexperience this year, uh, Big Bull Mill and uh, Brent are going to have a good time trying to call this one. <laughs> that time it was just a simple off-tackle run. 
by Cedric Shaw out of Austin Texas who picks up a first down here in their opening play of the second series of the day for Coach Fry and the Hawkeyes. But that simple off tackle play included one extra offensive lineman there over on the short side. Now you'll see three linemen here. Hold it right there. See, there's two tackles playing right there and a tight end still remaining outside him. Now, call 31 gets a kick out block. There's the nice hole. It's Shaw again with speed swinging to the outside. Right in front of the Hawkeye bench, Deion Johnson busts him out of bounds. And Shaw's a good looking running back, Dick. Yes, he is. He can bounce outside. He has that good quickness. He did it well last week against Oregon. If Michigan has a weakness, I believe they're not quite as quick as they'd like to be in the linebacker spot. Yes, they can shut you down inside. But if you bounce outside after con being constricted inside, they don't quite have the speed to accelerate outside. Colorado exploited that last week, running the option with that quarterback. They just were a step short getting there. Second and four, the ball on the Hawks, 46. Driscoll. Complete. Into Michigan territory. First and ten, Scott Slutsker, the tight end. Well, the defensive coordinator, Lloyd Carr, knew they were going to do some unusual things. Now, that time, they line up in a basic formation. But what that forces Lloyd Carr and the defensive coaches to do is just play basic defense until they get a pattern and a read with the formations they're going to be a defensing. The other thing I was trying to do is to break all their tendencies from a down and distance standpoint and from a formation standpoint. First down, Michigan Territory. Three big tackles again. And Shaw could oh, not nice find play. room, and that was Jarrett Irons, whose daddy played in the NFL, and he was a spectacular linebacker for Coach Moeller last Saturday against Colorado. What a good one here. Oh, he is. And you know what they tried to do, again, is show all the tackles to the wide side of the field, extra lineman to your right, and they ran back to the weak side opposite that. But Irons reads it, number 37, comes right underneath the block there and fills and makes the play. Excellent job by a fine linebacker going to be a great one. Mm -hmm. Second and 11 after the one yard loss. Play fake Cole. Driscoll going to throw it on the move. Incomplete. He overthrew Cedric Shaw who had slipped out of the backfield. See that time Clarence Thompson the strong safety was in between the quarterback and the receiver and he had to throw the ball a little higher. Now a quarterback with more experience Driscoll is just a sophomore. He wasn't pressured. He could have slowed down and sort of lobbed it over the top and, and throw the completed pass. He will do that as he gains experience. Driscoll is a little bit banged up too, Brent. His back was real sore and didn't throw the ball very well in the practice field Thursday. One of the wrinkles, Mike Dupre, has been used this week in practice as an option quarterback. Expect to see him before this game gets too far along as Colorado was successful with the option. But here it is Driscoll on a straight drop back incomplete on third and 11. They gave him good time to throw that ball. That pattern took a while. Now you'll see why Ross Verba, the offensive left tackle, does a real nice job right here on pass protection. He's working there against Jason Horn. He sets up properly. He keeps in there. Quarterback has a nice pocket to set up and throw. Nice job by Ross Verba, the young sophomore out of Des Moines. Trevor Price was the cover man for the Wolverines, and now it is Nick Gallery. Low snap. Gets it up just in time. Ball touched by the Hawkeyes. Imani Toomer, who caught a big touchdown pass from Todd Collins last Saturday, the deep man. We've got a timeout. It's 3 0, Michigan leading Iowa. Doubleheader next Saturday on ABC. Most of you will watch Notre Dame against Boston College. Some of you will see Clemson, Georgia. That's the first game of the double dip. Then a little bit later, well, Illinois and Ohio State will go in, and uh, the Buckeyes could be in an angry, snarling mood if the Wildcats keep it up this afternoon. What a shocker that would be. Here, Michigan, favored by 18, leads it by a field goal. Jay Foster is in the backfield. And Collins 
Pulling out a little quickly. Now steps off to the left. There's a penalty flag down on the play. He's sacked at the four-yard line by John LaFleur, whose daddy wore number 55 here at Iowa. In fact, so did his granddaddy. He's a third-generation number 5-5 five -five with a big stop. You know, Todd Collins pulled out early. That's the same thing he did last week against Colorado in the final series. Remember, and they had the five-yard penalty in that last drive? Got to be patient. Calm down. He's got a lot of poise, this young man does. He makes very few mistakes. Penalty is declined. It was a six-yard loss on the floor tackle, leaving Michigan with a second and 16. Wheatley, the running back. Wheatley, left side. Wheatley to the 11-yard line, and Diaco brings him down. Todd Collins is just, you know, I, as you said earlier in the broadcast, an underrated football player. And people use that term loosely in, in all broadcasting, but to me, this guy is really something special. Look at that. Uh, percentage of completion ratio 65 his interception ratio is spectacular too thrown very very few of them third and ten for Collins and the Wolverines the Wolverines have not done a good job on third down conversions this year gets time goes deep down the middle Collins and it is bobbled and dropped by Mercury Hayes it would have been a great Diving catch and Billy Coates out of Grand Prairie, Texas gets a mid on it. Not electing go for the first down, trying to get the big play because he got the coverage he wanted. Single coverage to the post, you normally try to get it. Good pressure on him initially. He sets up there. Bobby Diaco, number 45, dropping out in the zone. See, he has a single coverage. He has nice time to throw. Wind up and let it go. Again, not thinking of converting to the first down thinking of going for the big one normally down here in this field possession Brent I would prefer to go for the first down because now you're putting out of your own end zone which Craig Baker does and that's not a real good punt that's a return ball Jasper the wide receiver Jasper to the 41 yard line where Iowa will have great field position here in the early going there was a tremendous block by a a man within the Iowa return team just annihilated one of the sprinters. I didn't get his number, Brent, but I'll tell you this. I want to give him a gold medal on that hit. These Iowa kids are really emotionally ready to play. What happens with teams like that, Brent, many times is you gradually run out of that emotion and you come back and play on just your physical ability and you're usually not quite as effective. Hayden Fry, a master at getting a team ready to play mentally. Half of the opening quarter gone here in Iowa City. Wolverines lead by a field goal following an interception. Ryan Driscoll out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, on a play fake to Shaw, has time and throws incomplete. Shaw was wide open, and Driscoll cannot find the range. Look at that score, 21 zip. 21 all now as Nebraska comes back to tie Wyoming. 21. Wow. Driscoll just throwing the ball too hard. He's got to relax. He's a sophomore in a pressure situation. First Big Ten game for him. He's got to slow down. He is one for five for five yards with that costly interception by Morrison. Here's that unbalanced line again. Set. Yep. And Driscoll will come over and talk about it with the coaches. And that gives us an opportunity to talk to you some of the talk, tell you about some of the shows coming your way here on ABC. Sunday, if you're looking for a lift, just look for life's little surprises on an all-new America's Funniest Home Videos. Then, Mama Jay's wardrobe needs a lift. So Josh decides to shop. It's built for comfort and it has a little speed in it too. Till he drops on an all new on our own. We're still browsing. Then, uh -oh. can Superman save the day? The new subway's out of control. Or is it the end of the line? An all new Lois and Clark after funniest videos and on our own Sunday on ABC.
Well, who's going to the Rose Bowl this year? A year ago, it was Wisconsin. They were knocked off today by Michigan State. A few years back, it was these Hawkeyes of Iowa going out west. Michigan, a couple years ago, went out and behind Tyrone Wheatley, clobbered Washington. Penn State, the pick by many this year to make it out to Pasadena with Joe Paterno. At any rate, it figures to be a great Big Ten season here. And the Hawkeyes, an 18-point underdog, are playing with a lot of enthusiasm. But so far, the quarterback, Ryan Driscoll, has not been efficient. And that's been the difference in the ballgame so far. This is second and 10 at the Michigan 41. And we'll pause five seconds for ABC stations to identify themselves. Hal Mady, number 77 there in the middle of the huddle. He has stepped into center because of Casey Wheatland's broken hand. Casey was attempting to snap the ball left-handed because of the cast on his right, but he was unable to do it efficiently enough, and so Mady, number 77, brings the Hawks out of the huddle. He's audibling here, Brent. I think he anticipates blitz coverage right now. They bluffed it, now they're backing out and going zone. Shaw. Nothing doing. Steve Morrison, number 36, right there in the middle of that pile. You know, Mady starting this ball game and have to line up on Tony Henderson, the fine nose guard for Michigan. It's tough. 79, left side of your screen. He's a physical player. He's do Mady's doing a nice job of holding his own on, though. Give him an A for effort and gives him a little leg whip. That's not legal, young man. <laughs> Anything goes when it's in a war. <laughs> That's the Big Ten. <laughs> the Big Ten. Campaign opens. It's third and eight. Great drop for Driscoll. Now under pressure, down the middle and a little bit high and incomplete. Anthony Dean, the intended receiver, and Clarence Thompson with coverage. Oh, is number 77 going to be a dandy, folks? Oh, and Trevor Price, number eight, gave Ryan Driscoll a dandy, too. He goes back in the drop back. It looks like he's going to have time to throw the football. He gets set up. It takes a little while. Coming from the left side of your screen, Verba, number 73, blocking. See, he holds the ball, he holds the ball, and now he comes underneath, and wham! He gives him a nice shot. Boy, that's smart. Nick Gallery's punt is in the air. And Toomer, fair catches, but inside the 10-yard line. What do you think about that, folks? Should he let it go when it's inside the 10? He elected to take it anyway, fearing that the coverage men might get down on top of it. So it is a fine punt. For Gallery and the Hawkeyes, and Nebraska seizes the lead for the first time today on Wyoming, 28 to 21. And you keep waiting for that sports board over there to change and show you that the Buckeyes have gone in the end zone. How about those Wildcats this year? Now it is the Michigan offense with Todd Collins from Walpole, Mass. Tyrone Wheatley, he's the tailback. It's Wheatley into the middle of the defense. Bill Ennising out of Kirkwood, Missouri, makes the stop. What they did that time, they slanted the two defensive tackles underneath the guards and scraped the linebacker right up in the hole, anticipating the inside run. Michigan likes to spread you out with three receivers, get your defense spread, and then go ahead and attack you inside. No change. In Northwestern, you and I both said, we're a much improved football team. They're doing a nice job of coaching up there. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain for Wheatley. Collins changing up with the line. Wheatley up the middle for daylight. It'll be close to a first down. We'll see how referee Jim Kemmerling, and he signals, yes, it is. So first down for the Wolverines, who lead it here 3-0. With Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroop, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us here on this overcast Saturday afternoon in Kinnick Stadium. But they tell us no rain. A lot of enthusiasm here as the Big Ten season begins in earnest. Michigan trying to shake off the nightmare of last week in Ann Arbor. Hayden Fry, a loser to Oregon. They won their first two. Now they've lost two in a row. And it is Todd Collins faking Wheatley on the draw. Out to the side to Hayes on the completion. Parker Wiedemann is the leader of the defense for Iowa. Very intense young guy. I said in the 
film study room on Thursday, and he was watching tape with me. He told me he could read the line splits. Here he is to the right side of your screen, number 56, working up inside there. He said he could read their line splits. When they're tight, they're going to throw or run outside. When they open up, they want to run the draws and that kind of stuff inside. He says, I'm giving signals to my other players. That play for a three-yard gain, and it's second and seven against that Hawkeye defense. A lot of change-ups for the Hawkeye defense. They move in and up, trying to give Collins different looks. Basically, what we're seeing here today is that the Michigan offensive line is starting to saddle up and play some muscle football. Wildeman made the stop that time, and it was Wheatley into the middle of that defense. This is something they did not attempt to do against Colorado until their last two series. It was a more wide open hell for leather kind of offense that the Wolverines showed us and then suddenly on their last two series prior to the miracle they drew very conservative. Coach Moeller was criticized for that approach but really if it wasn't for one fumble by fullback Shea Foster I think the Wolverines would have put the Buffaloes out of their misery. The only question I would have for Coach Moeller and the staff is why not run Foster a couple of times in the first half. Why make his first carry down at crunch time? Don't you run the risk of a fumble in that situation? I'm sure the coaches will review that. Now it's third and two for the Wolverines, who lead it here by a field goal. And Wheatley, first down, Wolverines. They ran that counter action to try to freeze that single linebacker inside. You know, I don't think they were really excited about Wheatley's first game performance last week. You know, they felt he ran just a little timid. He didn't show any uh, willingness or wanting to back off on that one, Brent. A little counter action, meaning, see, they're going to take the back one way and the other one lead up. The guards come around there. He gets a nice little crease in there for that first down. Seven carries for 32 yards here today, almost five yards a pop, so a little bit better, keeping the shoulders square, and they're using him on the muscle approach. Now off the toss, he'll cut back. Good tackle by Bobby Diaco out of Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Bobby Diaco has played every snap of defense this year. They just don't have any linebackers. Two kids were not eligible once the season started for academic reasons. That lost two guys, then they had some injuries. Here's Diaco right here. Now, he's careful not to overrun the play. He stays back behind the ball. Critical to do that. If you overrun in that cutback, see, he stays behind the ball, maintains very good discipline, and steps up there and then fills it. Nice job, Bobby. Chris Webb is in that defensive line, and Tim Diakabatuka in the backfield. Number 21 on the toss, runs the slant, and that is Chris Webb, 98, who rides him down. So here is Bianca Batuka, who in the absence of Wheatley, gave Michigan some great games back there at that tailback spot. Chris Webb did not practice all week. It was questionable. He had a warm-up today to determine whether he could play. He had a slight knee problem. Obviously, he can play. He was a walk-on out of junior college. And Iowa's had great success with kids walking on here. Had 17 walk-ons become starters over the last few years. Four of them had become team captains. One of them, most valuable player on the team. Good utilization of personnel by Iowa coaches. Third and six, Bianca Paduka. He is the running back. Michigan saying, let's strap it on and let's play. Now it'll be Collins. Gets time and it is dropped. Pass was intended for Pierre Cooper. Diaco had dropped back on the tight end and he was the coverage man. Todd Collins did a real nice job on this, ladies and gentlemen. They've been trying to improve his skills of looking defensive people off. He drops back and he looks left, looks left, and turns and throws a beautiful strike to the right. Cooper just doesn't come up with a catch. Good performance for the beat-up Hawkeyes on defense so far overall. Craig Baker punts again for the Wolverines. The ball is fielded at the 25-yard line by Tim Dwight. A penalty flag is down. Referee Kemmerling will sort this out for us, and then we'll get an update on that Nebraska situation from John Saunders. So he'll give the signal, and then New York take it away. All right, Brent taking the throw from the official this time around. Lawrence Phillips has led Nebraska all the way back from down two touchdowns. 
40-yard run here, eight carries, 118 yards, fifth consecutive game, 100-plus. It's now 28-21, Cornhuskers. Brent. John, it was a matter of time, wasn't it? But here the Hawkeyes are playing with a lot of enthusiasm, but they make a big mistake on that run, and it'll come to the 20-yard line for Ryan Driscoll, who will attempt to settle down in this series. The Hawkeyes are being shut out right now by Michigan. 3-0 is our score here in Kinnick Stadium. Cedric Shaw, the tailback, has been an impressive runner. Comes again. Shaw. Bolts off to the right. There's a penalty flag down again as Chuck Winters makes the stop. And now a second yellow flag comes down. Offensive line coming off the ball nicely regardless Stay with of the, the referee penalty. and the penalty, boys. This offensive team. Iowa is much improved. Talking to Lloyd Carr, he says they're the defensive coordinator for Michigan, he says they're the most improved. There are multiple falls on the defense. Offside, defense is declined. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Here is the face mask coming right at you. Cedric Shaw's got the ball in his right hand. He's running upfield, had a nice hole at the point of attack. Here comes Mr. Winter, number 35, definitely got him by that face mask. Chucky Winter playing good football from that safety position, but you can't grab that face mask. But what I was saying is Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, said that this is the most improved offensive team in the Big Ten. 12-yard run, face mask, ball out at the 46-yard line. So after the mistake on the return, Iowa gets it back, and now it is first and 10. Overall, that was a 27-yard gain for the Hawkeyes. Broke his play. Slips on the busted play, and he is buried for a loss. Irons, the defender, in on him. See, they're in that extra lineman formation that time, and when you put too many things in brand new from week to week, sometimes you break down and beat yourself, and on that specific play, that's exactly what happened. People were all going the wrong direction. Coach Fry has what he calls some exotics designed for this ball game. I'm sure we'll see one. Speaking of exotics... <laughs> Audibling. Second and 16. After the six-yard loss, they'll come back with Shaw. Sprints to the left. Shaw gets the corner, but only briefly as Ty Law comes up. And also, Jared Irons. That's not a sandwich you would enjoy. See, he starts up inside, and he wants to go in tight. That constricts the defense. He gets it in here. He draws the crowd to here, and then bounces outside. And I'm not too sure they quite have the quickness to reaccelerate as linebackers and get out there and make the plays like they would like to. See, they start up inside. He gets going. Now here comes Irons. He can't make the play. Other backer can't make the play. The corner, Ty Law has to come up and make it. Eight carries, 48 yards for Cedric Shaw from Austin, Texas. And Kent Call, now the running back. Driscoll fakes the delay, holds up the rush. Driscoll's got a receiver wide open. Willie Guy. But there is a penalty flag downfield. On the defense, it's a play, first down. The holding penalty was called on Deion Johnson, uh, the short field cornerback that time involved in coverage. Good time to throw the football. See, he pedals, he fakes the draw right up there, gets blocking upside. That little draw fake many times is just what you need to freeze a pass rusher out there all alone on Ty Law. Ty Law's got a lot of confidence. Gained, uh, finishing strong last year with four interceptions in the last few games and playing well so far. He thinks he can cover anybody. That time he lost. Hawkeyes inside the Wolverines 40-yard line. First down at the Michigan 37, trailing it by three. You know, Iowa through the first four games of the season an average 6.7 yards or so a snap on first down. And that's the only way they can hang with these Wolverines is being really effective on first down plays and get in those second short and third and short situations. 
An impressive running back so far for Coach Fry. That would be Cedric Shaw. He's been able to get to the corners a couple of times against this Wolverine defense. They pick up Willie Guy as a receiver. Willie's out of Memphis, Tennessee. He adds some speed. Shaw set the freshman running back record last year, Ben, as you talked about him, 561 yards. He had a very good first year, and he's demonstrating why now. Averaging 5.9 yards coming into this ballgame. That was Jason Henlon of Downey, California, over there on the sideline. And a reminder that tonight on the ABC Family Movie, the network premiere of a classic Disney. Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Then is Tony's new recruit on the take, the commish, tonight on ABC. Closing seconds, first quarter, first and ten. Hits the motion man, slipping out of the backfield. It's Anthony Dean of Pompano Beach, Florida. See, Michigan likes to hang back in their pre-called coverage. They change the formation of motion, don't rotate a safety up in there, so they just dump a temple at <laughs> Penn State. Woo! Not going to beat up on his former buddy, Ron <laughs> Dickerson, as we come to the end of the first quarter here in Iowa City. Listen to these Hawkeye fans. They love it so far. Aptiva. Aptiva. Second quarter with Michigan leading 3 0 and some adjustments being made over there for that second and short, coach. Yeah, well, Lloyd Carr, I think, is adjusting how they're going to cover that slot motion pattern uh, that was just complete here a minute ago, Brent. I'm sure they'll make a quick adjustment on that. Kent Call, the fullback. Cedric Shaw, the tailback. Ryan Driscoll, the Hawkeye quarterback. A play fake, and it's a beauty. Stands up and throws high and incomplete. So Hayden Fry comes up a gambler. There's a penalty flag down. A waist down is great to use as a waist down and try to get the big one, but that one was close to being intercepted. Wow. Aiden, you got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him. Oh, man. <laughs> He's had a lot of success doing the unusual. Holding on the offense, 10 yeah. yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. It was second, was it? Yeah, I guess it was. Here's the holding right there. That, that's that's Fritz Fouquet, number 67. He does a <laughs> slam dunk right there, right in the middle of your screen. Can't grab him like that. That's too close to the umpire. Yep, so it'll be second down now, and the ball is brought back to the Michigan 43. This will be a second and 17. See, you shot yourself in the foot with that decision on second and short. See that? Willie Guy, number one, he's at the bottom of your picture there. He's audibling now. And now they come back with call. Now, you see, that would have been good enough, Coach, for a first down on the last play. But instead, it's going to be third and long. And here are the numbers from the opening 15 minutes. Well, you look at plays pretty even. First downs dominated by Iowa. Total rush yards. Everything right now in favor of Iowa. I really look for the pass yards of Michigan to pick up here in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Turnovers, uh, Iowa one time, time of possession. Hey, within two seconds. Excuse me, Coach. I think Michigan dominated the turnover category, if I can have a vote. Yeah. Did I read that wrong? <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm just you just said that Iowa dominated everything, and I'm just kind of like making light of that. <laughs> okay. I just love that turnover, partner. Okay, now here is Driscoll off a play fake, got time, goes for the home run, and he's got it inside the five. Harold Jasper. He got the deep pattern between a rolled up corner and a safety working over there. And Lloyd Carr right there in the middle of your screen. He can't believe they could make that kind of mistake against that pattern. Top of your screen. Draw fake. Whole linebackers gets back. He's looking right, looking right. Now he turns back. See, that prevents the safety from getting over there. Now you'll see the safety, the right side of your screen, working right over there. That's Thompson trying to get there. A late step in getting there. On third and 16 at the 42, a 40-yard pass play. Driscoll to Jasper. And now Filer is in here with Shaw. Shaw with that quickness. Shaw short of the goal line with Jarrett Irons hanging on. 
That time they were unbalanced, strong to the right, and ran back to the weak side. And Aaron's the one linebacker. He recognized it. He recognized it earlier in the first quarter when they tried to unbalance and run away from it. Very alert play by Irons. They like the shift down here in this intense area, the one and two yard line, either draw you offside or get people outflanked by moving personnel from one side of the formation to the other. Filer is the fullback. Filer is short, tries to break free. Michigan holds him as Clarence Thompson, the safety, comes first, and Rob Sweat. Oh, how that Thompson delivered a big blow for the Wolverines. You can see why he has some great press clippings coming out of high school. Just a handoff to the fullback right up inside. He comes up over the top, see, and he got help. Yes, he got help from the other linebackers in there. That was Rob Sweat, number 44, that helped him, but he need someone else to finish him off if a linebacker hits him first. Don't let him roll forward. Timeout being called by the Michigan defense. Michigan will talk about it. Three, nothing but the Hawks are threatening. Yep, he's trailing by a field goal, but he's got a chance here to take the lead. This is third and goal down there at the Michigan one and a half yard line. Cedric Shaw, the Texas running back. Here comes the shift now. They like to come toward the shift now, Brent. And they roll Driscoll in that direction. Driscoll keeps it. Touchdown, Iowa. A penalty flag. Hold on. There was no foul on the play. Touchdown. They shifted over, got the man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody covering the course. Quarterback, the receivers all out. Everyone covering the receivers. Soft corner, no contained touchdown. Brian Hurley, Iowa City youngster kicking with Jefferson Bates from South Carolina. Putting it down, the Hawkeyes. A 17 and a half point underdog. Lead it here, 7 3 in the first half. There's a place near. There's someone still celebrating Jack of Root's birthday. <laughs> I thought it was a root myself. <laughs> Can't ever tell. It's 7-3. Iowa leading Michigan. And Hurley with the ball on the tee. Mercury Hayes and Seth Smith back deep. The Iowa coaches had both you and I feeling sorry for him for the last two days, telling us about all their injuries and whoa, we can't even practice, we can't even line up. They're almost in tears. Good and here they are screen. ahead. <laughs> what a smoke screen. Good smoke screen. <laughs> He's a sly one, that old Hayden is. I'll tell you that, ladies and gentlemen. So the other man whacks it high. And it is fielded by Smith. And Smith slips a tackle. Oh, Michigan recovers. Number 27, King, was able to fall on it. Oh, breathing a lot easier. Dick, another look at the TD. Well, you can see the two people will now shift. Here comes Willie Guy, number one. All right, Russell, they shift over. They bring the defense over there. You have to move over or you're out flank. Now they're going to try a pattern, pass pattern here with three receivers coming off and scrape it. They get them picked right there in the man coverage. Now freeze it right there. I really think Rob Sweat, 44, was supposed to have contained and he didn't get there. Quarterback just kept it under his arm. See everybody else playing man to man and runs it in. Tyrone Wheatley, Che Foster. Todd Collins at that Michigan backfield. Hayes, the motion man. Wheatley behind the middle. 
of the Michigan offensive line and that offensive line today has been playing without big John Runyon and Lyons moves over to the left side as a guard and Joe Marinero starts on the right side for the Wolverines who trail the Hawkeyes now 7 3. Well Marinero was second all big 10 last year and he had the leg injury and uh, just coming back he hurt it in the spring of 94 and just getting his first opportunity to really get going but he will improve the quality of that line once he gets game sharp. Jason Hinlan. <laughs> okay, third down, five. They love their football in Iowa City and in the high, entire state. Brent, I spoke at the, the alumni breakfast Friday morning at 6 30. About 400 people there. Really, I mean, they love their football. And they didn't come to hear me speak, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Collins gets time. Wheatley slips out of the backfield and is covered by Marquise Porter of Newark, New Jersey. See, they went with a blitz. They brought the linebackers. Now, that means your safeties are going to be tied up on other people. So you get up and get in that coverage. They lay the ball off, couldn't get the ball downfield. He's locked right on. Porter comes right up as a safety and takes that second guy out weak side, makes the play. What do you think, Good folks? Uh, these hawks on fire or what? Well, Bill Brazier and his defensive staff are doing an awfully good job of mixing up what they're doing with their defensive fronts and their coverages. Baker punts again for Michigan. Lousy punt. Wow. Baker. Baker. Unable to bury Iowa deep. I think that ball wound up in the stands, didn't it? A four-yard punt. Oh, my. Now, when you watch your favorite action-adventure show, you won't have to sit so close to the screen. Friday afternoon in Iowa City before the Big game with Michigan and a chance to paint up the town a little bit. This is a great college setting here in Iowa City, and uh, they love that four yard punt by Michigan. Punted from their own 43, and Iowa starts the drive from the 47. 10.07 to go, and the Hawks up 7 3. Driscoll, who after a slow start, is coming alive, and Cedric Shaw is tipped up, and down we go to Jackaroo. Jack, by the way, happy birthday. Well, thank you, Brent. You know, one of the great things about this stadium, Kinnick Stadium, is the fact that there are so many great fans, the underclassmen, the undergraduates all around here. But here's a problem for Michigan. This is the bench area right here. Now, normally you'd have 20 yards or so behind it, but look at here. Here's where the fans are. Now, it makes it extremely difficult for the coaches to talk to their charges when they come off the field. And believe me, this crowd is into this game today. Makes it pretty tough to hear you, too, Jack, by the way. <laughs> okay. Second down now for the Hawkeyes, up 7-3. Frisco can't find an open receiver. That's not a legal formation. Not a legal formation. Yeah, they called it. See? They start, he audible. See, the wide receiver covered the tight end, the tight end released, he was not eligible. The official caught it, good headlinesman there. That was a little glimpse over on the sideline concerning the Wolverines problems being so close to the stands as that helmet uh, tipped. An eligible receiver downfield by the offense, penalty is declined, third down. See what happened, they st see the tight end started to shift back right here in an audible, and then the receiver moved up and covered him. Michigan declines the penalty, which leaves the Hawkeyes in third and 10. Now remember in third and 16, 
Iowa burned Michigan and that set up the go ahead touchdown here a few minutes ago. And the flags come flying the whistles are blown before the before the snap. Maybe a false start or using up too much time and this one figures to go against the Hawkeyes. I was the most penalized big t 10 team right now that came in averaging a little over eight penalties a ball game. And sometimes that is because you do so many new things from week to week. Kids line up and they're thinking about the new things they're doing. Yes, they have a package they carry into every ball game. You know, sort of a dirty dozen package that they rely on. But many times you, you create some of your own mistakes. Got some people thinking. See, they're not getting anything out of that four yard punt right now. Third and 15. Back on the Iowa 48 yard line. Jim Kimmerly is our referee. Roger Haber is the umpire here in this Big Ten crew. Four down linemen for the Wolverines. He's audibling now because he sees what looks like a double zone coverage. Inside hand up and Shaw is tripped up. Shaw is hit by Jason Horn off the inside hand up and Shaw was well covered that time on the little lateral play inside He'd have been better off to drop it and they would have called it incomplete eh? see yeah see those inside shuffles if you get any kind of penetration that's hard for that running back to cross properly there clean line of scrimmage and accept the ball defense just whipped that one Nick gallery back to punt that's not a good punt either. we won't return it <laughs> so this has not been a kicking clinic here so far and a reminder what's coming your way Monday night AFC Central matchup the Houston Oilers roll into Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers and Barry Foster that'll be coming up at nine Eastern time here on ABC Houston reeling a bit the Steelers are coming off a loss on the West Coast it'll be interesting to see how they rebound sometimes on a Monday night they can play awfully well as they did a year ago against Buffalo. It is to go into Pittsburgh on a Monday night when they have a pretty good football team tough to win. Well, Michigan a little shaky so far, coach. Very shaky. Can't get any consistency in anything they're doing. Fake to Wheatley. Collins picks him up. Wheatley is short of the 30-yard line. Tom Knight is the defender. See, he wanted to use the play action and go downfield to the deep square in. The defense took it away. He went to his layoff man. Pass coverage right now doing real well. And the pass coverage people are the strength of the Iowa defense. The best thing they have right now are five or six kids that can play pass defense. Yaka Matuka checks into the game and Wheatley goes out. Number 21 is your Michigan tailback. The Akabatuka looking for daylight picks his way for three, four yards into the middle of the Hawks defense. I was really impressed in watching game tapes on uh, him that the, he has great acceleration, good vision, and he can get through the tiny cracks. He can get through the spot. Maybe a guy a little bit bigger like Tyrone Wheatley at 226 pounds doesn't get through. And the other thing I liked about him is when he saw the crack, he didn't hesitate. Boom, he hit it as quick as he could possibly get there. He can find the daylight in several languages, too. Yes, he can do that. He speaks French. I know that. Among others. Oh. Here he comes. Viaka Batuka slams in for a Michigan first down. Porter with the tackle. Again, it's that counteraction. When you're attacking a defense with one linebacker on the inside, you freeze him, you hold him in the middle. Now watch the running back 21 as he steps one side. Now that allows the two linemen pulling to get over there and get in front of him. Now look at that nice hole. And big old Parchenko number 72 latches on for a nice block. Averaging almost six yards a rush with three touchdowns for the Wolverines. Hayes is your motion receiver. Riakabatuka. Brent, they got to go outside. The defense is constricting everything. They've got to go outside, use their speed, make the Hawkeye defense chase him to the sideline. They have that kind of speed. I wonder if he heard what I said. <laughs> I kind of doubt it. He's done a great job.
You know, his record over four years compared to the four years of Bo's last four years is almost identical. The only difference is two ties. Two ties, that's it. 37 wins, 36 wins. But got, uh, Gary has one more, or two more ties. Collins making the signal to his two running backs. Off a play fake, buys himself beautiful time, throws it to Amani Toomer out of Berkeley, California. He caught the big pass for the score against Colorado. That's for 11 yards and a Michigan first down. Amani Toomer, a good big play receiver. Got behind that Colorado secondary and yeah. burned him last week. You know, and when the coaches talk about him and talking with Coach uh, they, they they rave about this guy, you know, and most coaches don't want to boast too much, but they think this guy has the potential to be a great receiver, not just a good one. Iowa territory and ball at the Hawks 46. Defense moving around. This is Wheatley who's back and that is a loss. Number 68 comes in with the play for the Hawkeyes making a fine stop coming off the bench now for the coach and that's Jeremy McKinney. Now, McKinney is an offensive lineman. That's why you can't find him on defense. They moved him to defense this week because of the injury factor. And I sat in there the other day, he came in, and he said, I haven't played defense since high school. He says, but this week I might get my chance. And he was excited about it. Played pretty well. A yeah. three-yard yeah. loss, second and 13. Next time, tip off my spotter, Jimmy Tubbs, <laughs> when you slide one of those offensive guys in the game, coach. <laughs> he surprised me, too. Now it's Collins back, sets the screen into Wheatley's hands. 45, 40, 35, 30, big play. Down to the 20, 19, and a flag down on the play. I think they called holding on Rod Payne, who got the key kick out block, the key block. Let's see what happened here. And an injured player. Follow the offensive center under the quarterback there. He will come out on the screen. That's Rod Payne. Quarterback sets up nice. He looks the defense off, turns, gets the screen off. Bottom left-hand corner of your screen. There's the block. See, he's got his hands, and they call him for locking on right there. And he's running strong, powerful. He runs through people. Right here, he runs through some people. He wants to get it in the end zone. It's all for naught. Plus, they have a lineman down with an injury on the 25-yard line. So the 31-yard gain comes back on the play. And the Wolverines will have to replace one of their offensive linemen here. That's John Perchenko, number 72, is down. Now, he replaced Mike Sullivan that was injured. So Mike Sullivan, who was banged up, has to come in and play right tackle now. Well, coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action. He's going to take a look back at uh, Colorado's Hale Flutie, which defeated Michigan on the last play. You Wolverine fans uh, might want to take a little break. You've probably seen that play enough this week, huh, up in the uh, Detroit area? Yeah. Here's Paul Schmidt and Todd Yeager, the two fine trainers from Michigan, tending to, to Pachenko. Saying, I think I pinched my nerve or something there. God, is he a big guy? 6'4", 287, just a sophomore. Redshirted last year, so he's really getting his first opportunity to play. He's big enough to eat hay, that guy. Look at him. <laughs> Coach, you come up with some classics every now and then, man. <laughs> but they cannot afford to lose offensive linemen. They just, they're very thin there anyway. Now remember John Yun, Runyon did not start the ball game. They're not normal left guard because he's partially banged up. Well, it's a second and 24 for Michigan at the 40 yard line with Iowa leading 7-3 here and five minutes to go in the first half and cool hand loop. Todd Collins at controls for the Wolverines. The Akabatuka is the tailback. Swings in motion. Gets plenty of time. Mercury Hayes 
near midfield and out of bounds. Billy Coates is the Hawkeye defender. The offensive line did an awfully nice job that time of picking up the stunts by the defensive lineman. They cross charge. And I tell you, when you have an offensive line that's makeshift right now, people playing out of position, that's tough to do. You have to give the offensive line coach, Les Mills and Mike DeBoer, credit for teaching those kids how to handle those line stunts. At the 50-yard line with his third and 13 for Collins and the Wolverines. Blitz. Collins avoids it and complete. He hits Toomer. And Toomer inside the 25 for a first down for the Wolverines. They blitzed him. They got a lot of heat. Offensive people did a nice job of picking up the linebacker blitzes. But I'll tell you that what really impresses me here is the poise. You can see... Diaco 45 pressuring up inside. He's a linebacker. Now watch him just step up in there. Never ever does he look rushed or panicked in a pressure situation. Great poise. Michigan came to Iowa City determined to play muscle football. But suddenly Collins is finding wide open receivers and the Wolverines who trail are on the move. Inside the Hawkeye 25 yard line. Wheatley swinging outside to the right. And he is just short of the 20 yard line. Ennis Ng makes the stop. Ennis Ng is from Kirkwood, Missouri. I really believe as they mature with this game plan and they watch what's happening out there, you're going to see the Wolverines run outside more. Block those defensive and outside linebacker people and get outside. So the coach wants Wheatley told what the situation is here. The ball at the 21 yard line. 3.45 to go second quarter. Wheatley picks his daylight. Wheatley found that crease beautifully and makes it to the 12 yard line and another first down. See, Wheatley can see those cracks and he has the acceleration and speed to, to pop through it quickly. Now he starts out, he wants to get outside. They constrict him. Here's the big guard right there. Glines, Leighton gets a nice kick out right there and he bursts right up inside there. Doesn't look timid on that flight. Looks like he's getting sharper and sharper as you carry the ball. It's an injury riddle, but emotional Hawkeye defense attempting to hang on here with this lead. First and 10 for the Wolverines he's inside the 15. Collins changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Off, hit beautifully by Fahala. And now Mercury Hayes comes free with it. You talk about poise under pressure. You talk about awareness. Boy, does he ever have it. Hayes is, Hayes is out there, single coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. You see it right there in the top of your screen. Just going to run a little short hitch pattern. He's not expecting the ball right off the bat. The corner's laying off. He says, throw it to me, throw it to me. He gets it. Now he uses his running back ability. He breaks away from him. Best thing that Hayes did was come back when he saw that his quarterback was in trouble and Collins alertly picked him up. Now the ball is at the Iowa 11 yard line. And here, the Akabatuka swinging wide to the outside inside the five yard line. Very close to a first down. Let's see where this ball is spotted. You see again the way, the way they were lined up defensively that time, Brent. You can't stop that play. There was no one on the tight end. You got to keep running out there. It's first and goal, and Dick, what about Bianca Batuka just taking it the other way? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he can go up inside, too. You know, he's the touchdown maker. He is. He Nine won't games, get eight touchdowns. He won't get an opportunity. They're going to bring Wheatley in. Oh, well, he's bigger and stronger, and he's the record touchdown runner in the history of Michigan football, so might as well let him do it. 41 touchdowns already for number six, Tyrone Wheatley. Will this be number 42? We'll see. First and goal now at the two. Cooper's the extra tight end on that side. Wheatley to try it, and he's jammed up in the middle. Nothing doing that time. George Bennett out of Miami, number 49, met him. All right, now you either have to throw it on this down or run it outside. Use your speed to get to that end zone. Right to the corner, right to the, the flag. They're doing a real good job of bottling that up inside. You have to give credit to John LaFleur and Parker Wooldeman inside there. Bobby Diaco. 
Oh, this would be huge for the Hawkeyes if they could hold Michigan to even another field goal. Second and goal. Wheatley slants back. Touchdown, Michigan. The Wolverines back into the lead on Tyrone Wheatley's 42nd Michigan touchdown. He breaks a record every time he scores six. He did a nice job of allowing that play to develop, too, even though he's running at the one-yard line. See, they run the fullback one way, make a fake to him to freeze the inside linebacker, give it back off there. He sees the crack up, crack up inside and just gets those pads down and powers to the end zone. Remy Hamilton trots onto the field. Mark Bullock out of Muskegon will snap it. And Jay Reimers Ma puts it down. It's a 10-7 Wolverine lead. 145 to go in the first half. Michigan's second lead of the game. And down we go to Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Ben, let's tell you a story about Remy Hamilton. You know, last year he was less than consistent. In fact, before the Notre Dame game, the story's been well documented. He says he didn't know he was going to kick field goals until he went out for pregame warm-ups. But let me tell you the ritual that he and his mother and father performed in Boca Raton, Florida all summer long. 50 practice kicks a day with his mother holding the ball, his father Harry doing the shagging of the balls, and the last kick every day would be 50 yards or more. And his mother started the routine, and she used to come up to him and say, all right, this is the one for Notre Dame. Kind of like what Yogi says, deja vu all over again. And he made it to beat Notre Dame, and then following practice every day, she went home and had herself a nice Remy Martin. <laughs> I'm not kidding, folks. That's how he got his name, man. Mom liked the Remy Martin and says, even now, his nickname is Cognac. I got to like that mom. Hey, you know, living in the Napa Valley, I could have been named Cabernet. You know? <laughs> We've got an injured uh, Hawkeye player down here at the five-yard yeah, gotcha. line. Marquise Porter may be down. We'll, uh, we'll hold on here and see. Ed Crowley and his training staff out there with, with Coach Fry. You know, Ed Crowley, the trainer here, played football at Purdue with Bob Greasy. Is that right? Yep. Talking to him at the breakfast the other day. Let me, uh, Dick, remind everybody that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And for the 24th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. Chevrolet has made a lot to uh, college athletics through the years. We'll have the genuine Chevrolet players of the game following this contest here in Iowa City. 1.45 to go here as the Big Ten swings into high gear. Florida a winner today. Nebraska has come back. Florida State takes the weekend off. Penn State, Colorado both winning. Arizona goes later. Michigan now leading. Notre Dame winning against Stanford. Be interesting to see, can Michigan still win the national championship? It was a question raised in Michigan. The answer to that question is a definite yes if a combination of factors happen. The one thing you have to remember about the college polls, if you're going to lose, lose early because you've got time to battle back. So, yes, it was a major blow to their chances this year, but no, they're not completely out of it. In other words, if Notre Dame had lost early in the year to Boston College and then had come back and beaten Florida State late last year and gone on to win in a bowl game, they would have indeed been crowned national champion. That's how the polls work. And here's Porter who was shaken up over there on the sideline. Tim Dwight and Tavian Banks are back deep. There they are. The Two-yard line set to return this. A minute 45 to go. We get word that Porter is okay. Just shaking up on the play. Better get on it. Jasper running over there, and so too is Tavian Banks, number 22, who pounces on the ball and saves it. That's a free ball. Well, let's see what uh, Hayden elects to do here. He's got 144. He's down by three. His quarterback has turned it over once here in the first half. And he doesn't want to turn it over here. 
You know, they've had some momentum in this first half. They played them uneven. They just lost a little momentum by giving up the touchdown with a minute and 45 seconds to go. Better off here not to take too many chances. No exotics down here at this time in the game. On the other hand, you never know what the slime we might come up with. Wiggeman is in the ball game at center. They moved in that offensive line. It's not going to be first and 15. That ball is going to come back to just outside the 10 yard line. Casey Wigman is now in at center. Now he's the young man that broke his right hand and he's going to try to snap it left handed. Good tight. There's. There's that club. <laughs> That's not a club, that's a weapon. Uh, you, get, you get a misdemeanor if you hit anybody with that thing. But he will snap them now on the practice field the other day, Brent. They dropped three snaps during practice with well, that left hand snap. So it oh, is nice defense. Cedric Shaw, and now 139 to go. The timeout situation Michigan with one, and Iowa with two. Do they have enough time here to force a punt? That'd be kind of an interesting situation. Let's see how he snapped that ball. There he is. You know, not only do you have to snap it with a different hand, you have to line up on a guy right in there that doesn't like you. Fortunately, this play calls for a little help. But that's a tough assignment. Second and 16. The clock is running towards 110. Remember, the Wolverines show one timeout remaining. Bobble, pick back up. Loose. Michigan's got it. Morrison pounces on it that. with 101 and a chance now in the closing minutes on a pitch late with a minute to go when they're trying to run the clock out. Yeah, unless Hal Mady, the offensive center that has been playing the ball game for Iowa, is injured, he should be in there in that situation. They had trouble all week snapping the ball. Here it is now. Look at the balls on the ground. I can't understand why you would take that chance at this position in the field at this time in the game. God. Big opportunity here for the Wolverines. The ball at the 17 yard line with a minute to go. Boy, this is pressure on the defense. And Bill Brazier, has done, with the defensive coordinator, has done a great job so far. Look for Michigan to try to strike right away. Three wide receivers now for Collins. If the offensive line can give him time, maybe he can find it. They're going to keep it on the ground with Wheatley. Wheatley get needs to get out of bounds to stop the clock, and he does it. He's down at the 15-yard line. One timeout remaining for the Wolverines. A surprising play, and even more surprising that Wheatley didn't haul it out of bounds. Well, they had him spread sideline to sideline with three receivers to the top of the field, the wide side of the field. Normally, they work back to, to uh, Amani Toomer to the short side of that. That time, they just spread him out to run the draw. Well, I'm surprised that they didn't chuck it into the end zone on first down. Give themselves a chance right away to strike after that turnover. In talking to Coach Moeller about his offense, he says, you know, he, he knows he'd like to run the ball a little bit more than he has been, but Todd Collins is so good, he wants to take advantage of his ability too. Maybe take advantage of it on that first down call. Now the coach is reminding them of two things because I could read his lips. Number one, if they get a first down and that would be at about the six yard line, the clock stops while they move the chains into hurry. Number two, he reminded them, get out of bounds if you're over there on that sideline. He's got 48 seconds to work with now and he's out of timeouts. Now remember, if they're going to set up a field goal and they don't get that first down, somebody's got to get the ball out of bounds. You're going to throw the ball down here in this intense area. Throw the ball to your best receiver, Amani Toomer. Comes into the ball game with three touchdowns. He's, you know, uh, he's a very, very skilled guy. Plus, he's six foot three. He's physical. One thing coaches like to do, and you know it, Dick, better than anybody, is save that last time out in case they need it to get that field goal unit on the field. See, now they have three wide receivers to the top, Brent, trying to get isolated one-on-one -on -one down here to Toomey, number 18, the bottom of your screen. Let's see if they can do it. Offensive line holds up. He goes for Toomey, and it's knocked down at the end zone. See, Can't was, get it in, and it was Porter making the play. He was sitting there in zone, reading the quarterback's eyes, playing inside-outside. He's lucky that was not intercepted. 
Todd has got to look that safety off just a little bit longer if he's going to get that ball in there. Now it is third and eight. Here's what I'm talking about, left-hand side of your screen. See the safety top middle right there, Porter? Bo Porter, now see, he's just sitting there waiting for him to come inside, and he attacks it. Just a step later, he picks it. 44 seconds to go, first half. No timeouts, third and eight. Collins throws to the corner, and Hayes incomplete, so it is fourth down at the 38-second mark, and the field goal unit comes onto the field for Michigan. All things considered, the Hawkeyes have to be pleased with what happened here. I agree with you. I was just going to say that Bill Brazier and the defensive staff got to really be excited. They have just given up a touchdown in a position to give up another one, and they don't do it. We get word that Jay Reamer's mob bruised his thigh, number 16, and that means that Bob Greasy's son, Brian Greasy, number 14, trots on to hold it here. This will be a 32-yard field goal attempt for Remy Hamilton. He's two for two. Well, it is 13-7, folks, but if you're a Wolverine fan, you're saying it should be 21-7. That's twice. The Wolverines had golden scoring opportunities and couldn't cash in, settling for field goals both times. Nice to have a golden toe like Remy Hamilton. And be able to kick under pressure like he's already demonstrated he could do, you know, a few weeks ago. 42-yarder against Notre Dame. Oh, those turnovers. I think they brought that one on themselves. Substitute a center in with a broken right hand that's never played again. Snapping with your left hand, you're asking for trouble. Let's see, Dick. We'll go down at halftime. You coach the Hawkeyes, I'll coach the Wolverine. <laughs> We've, it's real easy up here for, oh, for you me bet. to hand out free you advice, bet. right? You <laughs> bet. You know, when I was coaching, every once in a while, a friend would tell me what some analyst said. <laughs> I'd be yeah. all upset. Did it make you mad? Oh, yeah. It's what the hell does that guy know about it? You know? They do get mad when we say those oh, things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they should. <laughs> Eric Clavel, all on the tee. Dwight and Banks. Not back too deep. They expect a short kickoff. They do not expect shades of Notre Dame here. And it's the up man. One of the blockers. He's down at the 29 with 30 seconds. That's Re uh, Reggie Williams, a backup fullback, third string fullback. They use him as a blocker, some in substitution. Looks like he's going to stay in the game right now because he's a pretty good blocker. Oh, nope, here he comes out. Well, let's see who the center is. That's a key decision here. Who's going to snap the ball and then, oh, don't you love the bands in the Big Ten, folks? These kids have a lot of enthusiasm. They were at the breakfast the other day, Brent. And they told me, Coach, we work just as hard as football players. Make sure you Where, get us on at halftime. Where's my Michigan band, man? <laughs> I missed, I missed my folks here. They didn't, didn't make this road trip, huh? Cutting back on expenses, huh? They shouldn't with that band. They should go every place, make every trip. Love those two bands over in Michigan. Michigan, Michigan State. Well, this is called the full oh, Nice, nice. nice. Boy, that's a nice job by Trent Zinkwitz, number 76. He really is a good football player. You know, he was hurt last year and didn't get to play a lot. Had the knee injury against Notre Dame, but I'll tell you, he's, you can see why he leads him in tackles for losses. He's a man, especially when you run right at him. Well, get ready, Big John Saunders. We're coming to you, fella. It's 13-7 Michigan, leading by six. Well, at halftime, Michigan leads Iowa 13-7. I want to thank Mrs. Olson from Iowa City for sending me this necktie. This is the land of the pork bellies here, folks. 
And this is something. Look at that little Parker down there. Huh? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm, I bet you Arlene is embarrassed looking at that type. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not what no you class. Do. It's all right. No, listen. Yeah, futures are up here in the Midwest. Yeah, you, you would know. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the key plays now. Iowa had a big pass play to Jasper to set up their first touchdown. They came back on a third and long, and they were able to spring him here, Coach. Well, they, you know, they gave him time to throw the ball. This took a, lot, a long time. They faked the draw in there. But actually what happened, they broke the coverage down to the right side of your screen. The safety did not get over to help the corner. See, the corner was rolled up. The safety there, Thompson, did not get over there quick enough to make the play. Good throw. Now, from there, Iowa struck with this touchdown, and it put the Hawkeyes up 7-3 after the extra point. Well, he wanted to throw the football. They're all dropped off trying to cover every receiver out of there. A big, strong, young sophomore just puts it under and powers it in for the touchdown. Michigan to go along with a couple of field goals also scored a touchdown. You Mr. Know, Six did it. Well, you know, we can all praise this guy, you know, and coming off the injuries like he has that shoulder here. He doesn't show his favor in that shoulder at all. See, he puts it down and uses it a, bat, a battering ram. Now, we want to go back on this turnover because it cost the Hawkeyes three points. Suddenly the center, Wigman, with a broken right hand was sent in. Now he's a right-handed snapper. As Dick Vermeil told you in the first half, he's been practicing left-handed. Led to this bobble. Wolverines recover, kick a field goal. Jack Aroot, what was the explanation of the Iowa coaching staff? Well, Brent, I asked head coach Hayden Fry, just why did you replace Matty with Wegman? He said, I didn't. I said, was it a mistake? He said, yes. He said, I can't believe that it happened. You guys up in the booth know a lot of times, especially when you're getting down towards halftime, things just happen automatically. It almost sounds to me like maybe Wigman talked his way into the game. Painful conversation, huh? 13-7, and we'll take a look now at the numbers from the first half. Michigan with 34 snaps to Iowa's 30. And uh, Dick, what do you make of the uh, yardage situation? The Hawks, of course, with two costly turnovers. Well, it's pretty even, as you can see right there. Michigan up 11 yards in total offense, 14 in rushing, minus three in passing. I kind of think that Michigan will throw the ball a little bit more efficiently here in the second half. You really have to credit Iowa for playing as tough as they have. They've, they had to go on the field defensively and defense, a fine offensive football team, inside the 20-yard line twice and didn't give up a touchdown either way. Good coaching and, and in preparation by the defensive staff led by Bill Brazier. Brian Hurley to kick it off. Smith and Hayes back deep for the Wolverines to start the second half here at Iowa City. Michigan favored by 17 and a half, leading by six at the half. Smith. And Smith returns it to the 34-yard line. And it'll be Todd Collins. And the Wolverines coming back out. Now, here's a young man who's not been mentioned in all the Heisman hype this year, but uh, folks do not overlook Todd Collins when you are considering a worthy candidate. Tyrone Wheatley off to a slow start because of that injured shoulder, and it's entirely possible that it'll be Collins who will carry the banner of the Wolverines when it comes around to that vote in December. I'll tell you, the other people that better really be alert for that guy is evaluate him critically in the NFL draft. If I was a new franchise, he'd be my guy right now. Really? I haven't seen anybody any better. No, I'm really impressed with him. Here's Tyrone Wheatley. He's the running back behind Collins. They're going to slant him to the outside. And he is met by Jason Henlon out of Downey, California. Number 21 has played pretty well. Yeah, he didn't get back underneath that kickout block. He's got to go underneath that kickout block. Now, here are some fellas to consider. There's another Collins, name a carry over there at Penn State, and running back, Janet Carter, who's been very, very impressive, and Cordell Stewart, who can launch a football 70 yards. They all are candidates because of what's happening to the leaders when the season began. It's the wounded Heisman hopefuls, Tommy Frazier, Steve McNair, J.J. Stokes, Tyrone Wheatley. And McNair, we hear, is probable today. So See, all the injuries have thrown it up in the air, Coach. They're stemming that defense around. Diaco tackling Wheatley. He's on the verge of breaking that type of play every time he carries it. Just one more step. So it's third down here for the Wolverines and three yards to start the second half. Sending me this necktie. This is the land of the pork bellies here, folks. 
And this is something. Look at that little Parker down there. Huh? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm, I bet you Arlene is embarrassed looking at that type. Oh, my God. It's not what no you class. Think. That's all right. No, listen. Yeah, futures are up here in the Midwest. Yeah, you, you would know. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the key plays now. Iowa had a big pass play to Jasper to set up their first touchdown. They came back on a third and long, and they were able to spring him here, Coach. Well, they, you know, they gave him time to throw the ball. This took a, lot, a long time. They faked the draw in there. But actually what happened, they broke the coverage down to the right side of your screen. The safety did not get over to help the corner. See, the corner was rolled up. The safety there, Thompson, did not get over there quick enough to make the play. Good throw. Now from there, Iowa struck with this touchdown, and it put the Hawkeyes up 7-3 after the extra point. Well, he wanted to throw the football. They're all dropped off trying to cover every receiver out of there. A big, strong, young sophomore just puts it under and powers it in for the touchdown. Michigan to go along with a couple of field goals also scored a touchdown. Yep. Mr. Six did it. Well, you know, we can all praise this guy, you know, and coming off the injuries like he has that shoulder here. He doesn't show his favor in that shoulder at all. See, he puts it down and uses it a, bat a battering ram. Now, we want to go back on this turnover because it cost the Hawkeyes three points. Suddenly the center, Wigman, with a broken right hand was sent in. Now he's a right-handed snapper. As Dick Vermeil told you in the first half, he's been practicing left-handed. Led to this bobble. Wolverines recover, kick a field goal. Jack Aroot, what was the explanation of the Iowa coaching staff? Well, Brent, I asked head coach Hayden Fry, just why did you replace Matty with Wegman? He said, I didn't. I said, was it a mistake? He said, yes. He said, I can't believe that it happened. You guys up in the booth know a lot of times, especially when you're getting down towards halftime, things just happen automatically. It almost sounds to me like maybe Wigman talked his way into the game. Painful conversation, huh? 13-7, and we'll take a look now at the numbers from the first half. Michigan with 34 snaps to Iowa's 30. And uh, Dick, what do you make of the uh, yardage situation? The Hawks, of course, with two costly turnovers. Well, it's pretty even, as you can see right there. Michigan up 11 yards in total offense, 14 in rushing, minus three in passing. I kind of think that Michigan will throw the ball a little bit more efficiently here in the second half. You really have to credit Iowa for playing as tough as they have. They had to go on the field defensively and defense a fine offensive football team inside the 20-yard line twice and didn't give up a touchdown either way. Good coaching. And and in preparation by the defensive staff led by Bill Brazier. Brian Hurley to kick it off. Smith and Hayes back deep for the Wolverines to start the second half here at Iowa City. Michigan favored by 17 and a half, leading by six at the half. Smith. And Smith returns it to the 34-yard line. And it'll be Todd Collins. And the Wolverines coming back out. Now, here's a young man who's not been mentioned in all the Heisman hype this year, but uh, folks do not overlook Todd Collins when you are considering a worthy candidate. Tyrone Wheatley off to a slow start because of that injured shoulder, and it's entirely possible that it'll be Collins who will carry the banner of the Wolverines when it comes around to that vote in December. I tell you, the other people have better really be alert for that guy as evaluate him critically in the NFL draft. If I was a new franchise, he'd be my guy right now. Really? I haven't seen anybody any better. No, I'm really impressed with him. Here's Tyrone Wheatley. He's the running back behind Collins. They're going to slant him to the outside. And he is met by Jason Henlon out of Downey, California. Number 21 has played pretty well. Yeah, he didn't get back underneath the kickout block. He's got to go underneath that kickout block. Now, here are some fellas to consider. There's another Collins, name a carry over there at Penn State, and running back, Janet Carter, who's been very, very impressive, and Cordell Stewart, who can launch a football 70 yards. They all are candidates because of what's happening to the leaders when the season began. It's the wounded Heisman hopefuls, Tommy Frazier, Steve McNair, J.J. Stokes, Tyrone Wheatley. And McNair, we hear, is probable today. So See, all the injuries have thrown it up in the air, Coach. They're stemming that defense around. Diaco tackling Wheatley. He's on the verge of breaking that type of play every time he carries it. Just one more step. So it's third down here for the Wolverines and three yards to start the second half. Now in the first half one time in a third down situation they went for the six point play. The way it's been going, I think they'd be better off just to try to pick up the first down.
That's exactly they what they do. At the 49 yard line. And it's Seth Smith out of Carbondale, Illinois. He picks up the necessary yardage. Just they, underway. Dick? They really like this kid, Seth Smith, too, Brent. You know, just a sophomore, as you said. He came in with great credentials. They have a lot of good young football players. In fact, this total offensive football team really only has two starters in there that are not going to be back next year. Wheatley in motion. Collins on first down with plenty of time. Wheatley at the 45-yard line. Good protection, good pass protection that time by Shea Foster, the big fullback in there. He picked up the outside rusher, gave him time to throw it back there. They would have liked to go a little bit deeper. Wheatley was out there in sort of a controlled route, just a layoff guy. Todd Collins had one of the great athletic records in the history of Massachusetts at Walpole. One year he played in three state championship games, baseball, basketball, and football. I think he's audibling again, Brent. The Akabatuka is his running back, and Collins is going to go for the home run. Incomplete Toomer, the intended receiver. Toomer was double covered. Knight out of New Jersey over there to make the play for the Hawks. Excellent corner coverage. What they did is they ran a little stop and go. And first off, that's tough to throw accurately, and it's tough to defend. But you can see the corner did stay right with him. And number four, Pat Boone comes over and makes a play. And they said Tom Knight was the best coverage guy they had on the squad. He could be a great corner someday. He demonstrates it there, coming a fine receiver. Michigan four for nine on third down conversion. Need four yards here. The Akabatuka battles for it. It's so soft over there, Brent. As I look down on it, it's so soft over toward that tight end and that kind of play. See Bill Brazier and the defensive staff trying to cover up some of the weaknesses, inexperienced and injured players. They've got to walk on playing his first college game, really, other than four snaps of experience out there as the outside backer. Uh, sooner or later, Michigan's going to take advantage of that. There's Brett Chambers, number 89. He's the young man I'm talking about. Four snaps of experience, and he's playing against the Wolverines. Nice job. That a way to battle, young man. What a way to grow up. See up on top. Now they're shifting. They got to snap it quick. The ball at the Hawkeye 38 yard line. Collins getting plenty of time. Couldn't find an open receiver, so he'll drop it off. And Mercury Hayes slips a tackle before he is out of bounds on that far he side. To, he wanted to throw the curl pattern to Imani Toomer, but Imani was not aware of the underneath coverage. All he had to do was curl around the underneath, uh, the, the underneath coverage. Top side slot. See, they're coming up there playing three deep zone. You see the safety roll up in there? He's going to run the turn in. Now you've got to roll away. He does a nice job, Mercury does, of moving away from that underneath coverage. That's the kind of pattern that puts a lot of heat on a defensive secondary in college football. And the ball is at the Hawks' 33-yard line. Collins in trouble, steps away, and throws a one-hopper incomplete. He picked up Damian Robinson. And the crowd yelling for intentionally grounding. I think it was just a pretty good play on Todd Collins' part. When he made the turn, he spotted the wrong color jersey, and he decided to throw a one-hopper in that direction. Yeah. He, he, even in that situation, he doesn't look like he's frustrated or upset or hurried. He just boom, puts it away and says, let's go on with the next snap. Now it's third and five at the 33-yard line. They're taking an awful long time to get lined up. They got down to six seconds. Three. Collins. Incomplete. Cooper claiming that he was interfered with, and the quarterback agrees. Bobby Diaco was all over him. You notice Jay Reimers, the starting tight end, is not in there because he has a thigh bruise. So your backup tight end, Pierre Cooper, is in there. And Bobby Diaco, the young linebacker was from Cedar Grove, was right on him. Now on fourth and five, and 
Michigan sends its punter onto the field. It's Craig Baker. Now they're telling him to pooch that. Coverage to and it's a beauty at the one yard line. Craig Baker of Terre Haute, Indiana buries the Hawkeyes. Well done, Baker. That was excellent. You know, his dad was his high school football coach. His dad's going to really appreciate that one. That's hard to do. Makes up for that four yarder too, coach, yes, for the does. first half. <laughs> Punctual boy, our son. Punctual. All over the world, UPS drivers are the same. Ask their mothers. He's not rich, he's not handsome, but punctual. Mm. He was even born on time. They're obsessed with being on time, so UPS guarantees on time delivery to hundreds of cities around the world or your money back. If my son says he will be there, he will be there. It's a guarantee that not only has our driver's word on it, it has their mothers. He breaks out in a rush if he's late. I. This bench gets a professional finish with Krylon spray paint. No runs, no drips, no runs. Back in Iowa City, 13-7 Michigan leading. Iowa buried on that punt. At number 77, Hal Mady. Back in as center for the Hawkeyes. So Casey Wigman, who played late in the first half, has not returned. Iowa's going with the extra offensive lineman now. They've adjusted at halftime, and they're coming with an extra defensive lineman. When that would be Michigan countering that switch by the Hawkeyes. And the fullback Cole is stood up by Steve Morrison, who intercepted a pass for the Wolverines in the first half. Well, the Big Ten season underway in earnest, and there's an example. Penn State struggling. They're heavily favored in that one. Now they lead it at the half. Indiana comes back, and Northwestern loses, but only by two to Ohio State. Purdue stuns Illinois in Champaign, and Michigan State with a big win for George Perlis over Wisconsin. So some surprises today on huh, the Big Ten. Here it's 13-7. Michigan heavily favored. And that is Cedric Shaw into the arms of Trent Zinkowitz out of Cleveland, number 76. See, with the extra offensive lineman, Lloyd Carr, the defensive coach, comes in with the extra defensive lineman. Look at him now. One, two, three, four, five. One of those five is a linebacker down, but he's just countering big people with big people. Now it's hard to block those linebackers. See, they can run in and make that play. Third and seven coming out from their own five-yard line. Iowa three out of seven. Here's Shaw, won't get it. The Hawkeyes are going to have to punt. Boy, that ball almost popped out underneath his elbow. He got it up, uh, up away from his body, and that ball was out there. Looked like he was going to fumble it. Good defensive series right there. Good adjustments by the coaching staff. Lloyd Carr and Bill Harris and Rob Morris and Jim Herman, they did a nice job of making those adjustments. And Greg Madison, who coached those defensive linemen. Now let's see what kind of a return Toomer gives the Wolverines That's off of Gallery's ball. punt. At the 45, slips, trying to get free. Good coverage. Hark, his own man may have interfered with him just a little bit on that return. He couldn't get the kind of daylight that he wanted. It's 13-7, Michigan. Breakfast. Real good. Wonderful setting here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. The Hawkeyes down by six. Playing just a little bit tougher than a lot of folks expected here today. Todd Collins and the Wolverines will try to saddle it up in Hawkeye territory and see what they can come up with here. Collins on first down. Toomer dropped it. He turned and ran with the ball before he caught it. Will stop. Going to turn and run to the outside. His head turned before the ball was. What a fine receiver he is too. He doesn't drop many. Ball coming to the right side of your screen. You'll see it. See his helmet right there turning. Now he looks back. Too late. Wolverines not crisp yet today, are they, folks? Aching heart sometimes is a tough thing to shake off. Blitz. It's third and ten. 
Bill Inesengi of Kirkwood, Missouri, all over Collins. They were playing games in the secondary that time, giving him different looks. They showed him one coverage and then moved out of it late and then brought Bill in his end right in his face. Tim Biaka Batuka is the running back for the Wolverines. The crowd alive again. It's a third and ten for Michigan. Here comes the blitz. Line picks it up. Collins burns it. Toomer holds on this time. Toomer breaks free. And Toomer with three Hawkeye defenders on him crashes to the 10-yard line. First down, Michigan on the 35-yard gain. See, the coverage was man. They went over and they doubled the slot side of the formation. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. Then they went back. Now see the slot up here, two receivers. Watch the secondary as they work there. Give the isolation one-on-one -on -one coverage right here. Todd Collin reads this perfectly. There they go. They're going to go double the inside and outside in the slot. Single coverage down here. Good coverage by that corner, but it's tough when the quarterback gets that kind of time and the defender gets no help. And strong running by Toomer. Down officially at the 11-yard line. First and 10. The Akabatuka is still the running back. Cuts into the middle of the defense. Picks up four yards. I'm going to say that once. Bianca Batuka. I worked all week on that to say that clean. Did I you kept adding another Tuka in there. <laughs> Our producer, Kim Belton, he worked on touchdown Tim. <laughs> the coaches call him Tamunga because that's his first name. They don't call him Bianca Batuka. Fine young man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Got an injured Hawkeye. That is Parker Wiedemann down there. He's the leader of the defense, the emotional guy, the holler guy, the tough guy. Co-winner of the Defensive Hump Hustle Award for 1993. He's right in the middle of the screen there, playing defensive tackle. He just circles around right there, freeze it right there. See, he did right there. He's leg whipping right there to get out there to trip. He never quits. You know, Coach, one thing I always see in Iowa, is a coach Hayden Fry never ever stays on the sidelines when a young man is injured. I don't believe that any coach in the country is ever out there with every injury like Hayden Fry's goes way back to the early 80s. I used to come in here, Chuck Long and those fellas, and coach gets one of his wounded warriors and he's one of the first ones out there. I hope he is not hurt badly because they are just you know they they can't just handle any more injuries in that defensive front. But I think he injured his got a little leg whip throwing that leg up there to tackle the running back. He just doesn't quit that guy. He'll bite you, scratch you, kick you, leg whip you. How good a job is Duke doing this year? Five well, and zero. Is you, Coach Goldsmith a good one or what? What you bet. You know, and I read a nice article by him, and he, he gave credit to the coaching staff that was fired for doing a great job of recruiting him and leaving him some good players. Class, class statement by a class man. Richie in at fullback. Diaka Batuka is the tailback. This is a second and six. The ball is at the Iowa seven yard line. Diaka Batuka. Breaks free. Bianca Batuta Woo! touchdown. Holy cow. He took on half the defensive team. Whoa. <laughs> he even got a helmet rolling free from Tom Knight. <laughs> oh my gosh. He did that on just talent and effort. I tell you, you don't coach that kind of effort. You're born with it. I've always said the finest coaching job is done in the home by mom and dad. They've done a good job with this kid. It's just effort. John Ritchie, number 40, leading him out there. One block, one tackle there, two tackles there. Good block right there by Gines. Up in there, he gets a pass down. He just keeps his feet moving. Excellent effort. Now, Remy Hamilton is in, and in the first half, it was young Brian Greasy, and he's still out there doing no good. They've missed the extra point. Hamilton's kick is no good. Why is it to the right? Michigan. Down by 12, you'd normally go for two. It would have been better off. He tried that stunt all last week. <laughs> I'll be right back.
I'm oh, bored. Let's count the palm trees again. Why are you looking at me like that, Iggy? You okay? <laughs> Get it out. You're weirding me, man. Stop looking at me like that, would ya? You're creeping me out. Cut that out, man. <laughs> For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Iggy, you're gonna twist my head off. Iggy. Financial concerns. Medical problems. Driscoll backpedaling. Wide open. And there's a penalty flag down. Scott Slutsker, the receiver, a penalty on the play. Holding. And while we do that, let us check in with John Saunders on the Huskies of Washington. Uh, they still feeling the effects of the John, you're absolutely right. That run right there that you just showed around the country, probably in the Colorado-Texas game, that could put Napoleon right into the lead for the Heisman Trophy. I know he only gained 80 yards last week, but they were tough yards against Miami. An impressive young man. Second and 25, coming out from the eight-yard line now for the Hawks. They run the draw. This is Cedric Shaw going nowhere. Steve Morrison, who's played a whale of a game defensively for the Wolverines, he was there to lead the charge defensively. A little more aggression being shown now I think by this Wolverine defense. You're right, Brent. I think all of them up there are, are moving a little more intensely. I think they played that last week's game out of their minds in the second half or in the first half. Jack Aroot, what about Reamer's mom? Well, I checked with Dr. Gerald O'Connell, who is the head orthopedic surgeon for the, for the Michigan Wolverines. Here's what he told me. Jay did suffer a severe contusion to his thigh. He has put him on crutches, but here's the big story, I think, Brent. I asked him if it was how long he thought he'd be out. He basically told me, we're not sure. It could be as long as a week or two weeks. Mm, that'd be a big loss. Reimers has been a quality tight end for him. Oh, great slap. Catch by uh, Slutsker. Slutsker snapped that one down. One of the things about Reimers Mall, all the fans up in Michigan, of course, are very aware that he was a backup quarterback, and he said, I can do the job at tight end and do the job he did. He's the man down the hole who burned Notre Dame twice in that huge comeback. I mean, he was wide open. The Irish couldn't get a hand on him, and now he's been sidelined. Nick Gallery, he'll punt it, and the Wolverines should have great field position again. Amani Toomer back to return it. Those kind of balls are a little easier to return, Brent. And he's got an alley to the 47-yard line. It'll be Todd Collins and the Wolverine offense going back to work. This game is changing a little bit. Suddenly, the Wolverines have got control. Yeah, well, Iowa played on emotion, played hard, good coaching, good preparation. You sort of run out of that a little bit in the second half. In reverse, Michigan, I think, maybe just reeling a little bit yet emotionally from their loss last week on the last play of the game they play that out in the first half now they're a Michigan team now there's a young man who's really down I mean he's got two he's got two leagues on strike he was a baseball fan that's a baseball cap he turned around now tonight he'll turn that hockey jersey around man can you believe it we got two pro leagues on strike what's going on well here it is Michigan 19 Iowa 7 that's what's going on here and Wheatley penalty flag is down on the play Wheatley out of bounds inside the 10 yard line but there's a yellow flag and I believe this one is coming back all right we'll get a quick call here and then John Saunders you take it away pal in New York all right Brent thanks a lot once again, Washington State, as you know, hadn't given up a touchdown this year, but against Tennessee, Nilo Sylvan, 62 yards. Look at the quickness down the sidelines. Can't catch them. The Volunteers take the lead 7-6. to six. We'll keep you updated. Brent. John, a lot of wise guys said that Washington State would go in there and come away with a win in that one. We have to see what happens now. That was a pretty big play. Washington State with an underrated defense. And that's one way to burn them with surprise and get to the outside like the volunteers did in that situation. Now we get the ball being put down the other side of the 50 and this will be a first and 15. So that 32 yard run by Wheatley has come back and the clock may have gone off. Let's see what happens here. There's going to be a conference. And the coach was very upset. My conduct 
on the Michigan bench. That's the coach. Look at him. Is he arguing they're starting the clock too soon? Still arguing maybe about that motion penalty. Huh? myself a few times I know that feeling <laughs> well even though you know that feeling coach you might not want to get a penalty for your team I know it but you never know when they're going to call it now it's first <laughs> and 30 and you're digging out of a pretty good hole and you're at least for the time being in a ball game here Wheatley they come back with him you know something I really think now what they have to do is give the ball to Wheatley. He's regaining the running form that he finished the season with last year. He, he's running with confidence. He's running strong. See, so just get, taking it back there on the draw, he gets, uh, just avoids a man. Look at that good running ability. You look at the lane he sees right now. See, and showing the maneuverability to make a guy miss in the backfield is something I haven't seen him do a lot of in his running career. Nice job. 13 yards. On that run, the Akabatuka replaces him. Second and 17 after that run. Offensive line gives Collins great time. Toomer over the middle. The Michigan offensive line is now giving Collins all the time he needs against this injury riddled Hawkeye defensive unit. And he's the kind of guy, as efficient as he is, Brent, career wise, 65% career. Coming into this ball game, throwing 71% complete. Excellent coaching, excellent prospect. Third and five for the Wolverines. Boy, is he run. Woo! The Akabatuka. He is a tempo setter, this guy is. You notice how the players rally around him? They like him. He has that natural intensity, that fire in his personality. They run that draw, they get him up inside, and he just makes things happen. He's an exciting football player. Look at that, look at that. The Akabatuka is the running back, and he has gained 61 yards in this Offensive unit has bailed out that penalty on Coach Moeller, hasn't it? There he is. Piakabatuka explodes into that hole again, and he is down at the 16-yard line. Rod Payne, you know, when you run the ball inside as well as they're running it right now, you have to have a center and a couple guards doing a job. Rod Payne doing a job right here, right in the center of your screen here. Watch this young man come off the ball. Look at him. Look at him driving. They're spinning off him. Sometimes if you spin like that from a defensive technique standpoint, you spin away from the play. That's what happened. But nice blocking by Rod Payne. Second and three, and back comes Wheatley. What a rotation. One star to another. How would you like to be a defensive player trying to take on this pair of tailbacks? This is Wheatley. Wheatley did a whole just nice short job. of that first down, and Marquis Porter said, I will take him on. Did a nice job, Bo did. He came up there. You know, he's a 185-pound safety. came up. He did a good job just fundamentally, Brent. You know, got the pads on. This is third down. And one yard for the first down to keep this drive alive here at the 340 mark. Rushing in. Now they're really starting to pick the ball up. 134 to 59. Wheatley didn't get it. Nice job. Field goal time. That was Hausi Fahula, Fahala, F-U-H-H-A-L-A, Fahala. Did a nice job. Didn't play any high school football. Played in junior college. Number 91, top of your screen. He just keeps coming. He keeps he gets working there. He come, now he comes back up underneath, showing good quickness. 
He got some help from the other black jerseys, but he was there. Now, Brian Greasy kneels down at the 22-yard line. He gets a chance to try it again here with Remy Hamilton. And this one's good, and Remy Hamilton is perfect in the field goal department. The one he missed was an extra point, and so young Greasy, he's like Pops. He's a quick learner. <laughs> he gets the ball out away from his leg. Nice set. Gets it down there perfectly. Look at that finger pointed right there, and he watches it go through. To see the other hand, <laughs> you know, yeah, got the other hand finger. That was great. Nice going, Brian. Way to come back. It's 22 to 7 right now, two and a half minutes. Let me remind you about tomorrow night, folks. Well, I got a chance. There's an hour of uh, family fun, America's funniest home video. Some of you probably sent in some tape that made that show. That's a good one. On our own, Lois and Clark, and then uh, we got a movie for you. That's a story of a family's struggle with anorexia for the love of Nancy. And that's all tomorrow right here on ABC. That's the network of prime time television this fall, ladies and gentlemen. Just put your cash right on ABC. They're going to be first to the finish line. 235, quarter number three, and Michigan's got Hayden Fry and Iowa in a hole. It's 22 to 7. He has a lot of things in his offensive game plan we haven't seen yet. Like the option, we haven't seen the option play and that kind of stuff. Kicks it off for the Wolverines. Banks at the 15. Banks sprints to the outside. Almost found an alley. I want to tell you, Lovell, the kicker, came down there beautifully on that left side. If it hadn't been for Eric Lovell, Tavian Banks out of Bettendorf, Iowa, a young man with a future here, he might have gone the distance. Well, you know, the wedge was doing a good job up in front of him, and the coverage people took on the wedge. They constricted and went right into the wedge. He saw that, and he bounced outside the wedge rather than trying to bake, break right up inside it. Ball at the 41-yard line after that nice return, and here comes young Ryan Driscoll, and... Uh, what happened to all that option we were going to look at here? Today, well, they're, they're not going to run it with Ryan. They're, they're going to substitute Mike Dupre in and run it. Look at that. 14 yards of total offense for the Hawkeyes. they got to get that Hawk flying. Driscoll. Incomplete. Over the middle. Harold Jesper, the main man, and John Saunders, what about the Longhorns? Well, Brent, Colorado may be looking for late-game heroics again because the Longhorn Shea Moran goes 10 yards to Lavelle Pinckney, who does the work from the two. They go for the two-point conversion. They get it. 21-21 is the score. Meanwhile, Syracuse leads Virginia Tech 14-12. Brent. All right, John, and here it's 22-7, 15-point edge for the Wolverines right now. And there's two in a row. Russell, the tight end, slips out. And Morris and the linebacker with the coverage. Another first down, and the ball is down at the Wolverine, the 31-yard line. Michigan playing a zone defense on that down. Russell going in motion, coming across, and he just crosses the formation and settles down right in the zone. You'll see him right here. He'll come out here. They go zone, and he sets down. He crossed the formation. They come up there. you see Morris in 36 working out there, trying to constrict that zone, but it's just too much for the linebacker to cover. Ryan Driscoll moving the Hawks here. It's time and uh, snapped it off in the direction of Harold Jasper. A little miscommunication over there. He likes to catch the football, Jasper. He's an acrobat in the air. Not Incomplete. the fastest guy in the world, but he's a six foot eight high jumper coming out of high school. If you get it anywhere close to him, he can leap up and take it out of the air. What do you think of the Hawks' new uniforms? I like them. I like them. I think I, I think they're an improvement. I thought maybe it was throwback day here in Iowa City. <laughs> <laughs> the 
second and ten. Wolverines are coming. Here they come. Slutsker penalty flag is down on the play. Jared Irons coming back to make the stop. But there are flags. They brought the inside linebackers in there. They had a lot of people rushing the passer. That puts a man-to-man -man situation on Slutsker. Holding. Oh. Wow. That happens more often in a, a blitz-type play, Brent, than it does in a regular pass rush situation. You have more people coming. You have someone maybe is going to get through a, a gap. My God. That's our spotter, Jimmy Tubbs. <laughs> but anyway, you see that guy coming, a lineman might just reach out and grab that linebacker as he runs by. So it's the top of the hour, and uh, congratulations to the Fighting Irish. Come away with a win in South Bend over Stanford today. 34 15. And here, Michigan on defense, leading Iowa, 22 to 7. And Slutsker again working in the hole and inside the 25 yard line. The tight end goes for the Hawks. They shifted the tight end to that tight end position. And what, you'll see him shifted right up here. Now they use the fullback fake right here. Freeze it right there. Now that freezes the linebackers and allows him to get down behind him. See, he worked in behind him. And there's that hole. Nice job, good execution. A 20 yard gain on third and four. Driscoll with two big third down plays in this game. One back in the first half led to the Hawks score. Let's see if he can cash in on this closing half minute of the third quarter. Here's Shaw on the toss, bounces to the outside, and then takes on a couple of defenders over there on that far side. He slammed into Chuck Winters pretty good, didn't he? Matt Purdy, the big offensive left guard, did a nice job of pulling. They were in that unbalanced line again, and they brought the tight end over. You'll see what I'm talking about here. They bring this extra lineman. See, they already have one extra. Now they bring another guy over and load up. But Purdy pulls out and gets the kickout block. How do you like that drone there, Brent? Yeah, pretty good. I ought to be an architect. Here it is. Now see that kickout right there. Did a nice job with that block. That gives him that running lane. They just have too many defenders, I mean, offensive players over there for defenders. Hard running by Cedric Shaw, the young man from Austin, Texas. And Shaw comes over to the sideline. Winners is shaken up on the play. We'll remind you next week, doubleheader time. Those of you who follow the fortunes of the Fighting Irish, they'll be on ABC next Saturday at 12 noon against Boston College. And the second half of the double dip, many of you in this area will watch Illinois take on Ohio State. So our coverage begins at noon next Saturday here on ABC with Notre Dame and Boston College. And boy, that'll give you a headache the way Shaw slammed into him over there on that far side. That was an excellent job, and down we go to Jackaroo. Jack? Well, Brent, we had an opportunity to talk to Hayden Fry. You know, one of the things is he's very outspoken about situations within the NCAA. He even alluded to the fact that he might retire, and I asked him, what would you do after you retired? Not in the near future until the players want to do like the professional people, form their union, go on a strike, get their attention that, hey, we are valuable. We, we are the people that the players are the ones that, that sell the tickets. And uh, when the academic people that make the rules realize that, I think there'll be some changes. But, you know, that's like pulling teeth. You don't go to the dentist till your teeth hurt. Yeah, let me uh, correct that. That was another sound bite that Jack got from Hayden. I'm going to fill you in on that story here in a moment. But don't be confused by that. The ball is at the 15-yard line. And that's Slutsker, the tight end, with that completion. Hayden was referring to the fact that he said in the interview with Jack that he thinks that the athletes, the NCAA student athletes, should be receiving some sort of reward for the time they spend on the athletic field. And he thinks the only way they're ever going to get it is to band together and uh, walk out. And we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. At the Wolverine 11 yard line. Driscoll. Cedric Shaw, his talented running back. 
This is Shaw, swings wide to the right, short of the first down. Good job of blocking Curry that time to about the 10. by Alan Cro uh, Quaker. Now, there are the numbers. You can see total yards. Michigan took control of the game in the third quarter, 256 to 190. Only two turnovers came earlier by the Hawkeyes. Michigan now leading in time of possession. Now we come down to a third and six play here. Uh, what do you got in mind here, Coach? Yeah, they have some delay under stuff. If they get the zone uh, coverage, they use that. If not, then they go to the corner patterns off it. That's what they like down here. They got pressure tight man on covered. Driscoll on the move, incomplete. Tight and it man was Ty covered. Law with his man coverage on Jasper, who got the job defensively. Credit number 22 of the Wolverines. Excellent pass pressure too. You know that was a lot of pressure. He had to get out of the pocket. Now Jasper's going to cross the formation. See, he sticks him right there, and he just keeps right on crossing. Ty Law just following him, uh, setting him up, setting him up, setting him up. Almost putting his hand on him a little too soon. No field goal. Hayden Fry doesn't know how many times he'll get back down here. I'm going to go for it now. I agree with his decision. Called the They're fullback. Pitched. They're coming. They've got to hit him. And he's got it. Slutsker touchdown. <laughs> A gambling defense fails to bring the quarterback down, and Driscoll burns the Wolverines on fourth and six. I'll tell you, he threw that ball out of a foxhole. There were people all over him. He was sandwiched with was five defenders all over him. He knew where the guy was supposed to be. He threw it. Excellent, excellent courage on his part. They're going for one here. Brian Hurley, number 20, from right here in uh, Iowa hey, City. Normally down by nine, you go for two. Nails that extra point. 22 to 14. Leaves them within eight. When you're driving in the rain, water on the road can make you feel like you're riding on marbles. It gets under your tires and you can lose traction. So Goodyear created the award-winning AquaTread. Its deep groove aqua channel moves over a gallon of water away per second to help keep more tire in contact with the road for outstanding wet weather traction, especially in braking. The all-season aqua tread, only from Goodyear. We say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Buckeyes host Big Ten rival Illinois, Texas Tech. The young man who scored the touchdown. He was part of a great effort by the Hawkeyes here. Young Ryan Driscoll was being wrapped up, but he hits Lutzker for the TD. Five catches for 49 yards right now. Mercury Hayes and Seth Smith are back deep, but keep an eye on what the Hawkeyes might pull here with 14-11 to go. You never know what that sly fox Hayden Fry might come up with here. Hurley's the kickoff man. A lot of time to go, but you wouldn't put it past him to try an onside kick. Let's see. Kicks it short and high. The Hawkeyes have got it. it up Pat Boone from Memphis they kicked it high just really I think to cover it properly here now you'll see one of the individuals the signal a fair catch he signaled a fair catch on this thing then it came down it was Cooper number 88 to the right side all three guys not used to fielding a kickoff you know that's not their job it usually go deep they're up there they get confused turnover the ball at the 29 yard line 
Shaw and Cole are the running backs behind Driscoll. Big moment for the Wolverine defense. Penalty flag comes flying. Might be a legal procedure here as they snapped, they snapped it and did not give the Hawks a free play. Referee Kimmerling. Good ball. Bolt start on the offense. Now we want to take another look at this touchdown. Driscoll being buried. And then there was a gamble by a defensive back, Dick. See, they brought all three linebackers, Brent. They blitzed those guys. Every in it. Then they took the tight end and ran him across the field. Now you'll see the defender here. That's Thompson running behind him. The quarterback throws it. Look at this. Hold it right there. At the bottom of the screen, there were five guys on top of him. Fake the draw. Driscoll buys time, center field, and that ball is complete at the 20-yard line, close to a first down, and it was Mr. Slutsker again. They run a draw fake to freeze the linebackers, the same one they ran just a few minutes ago, effectively. See the draw fake right here? Now that freezes those backers, allows the tight end to get in behind the zone. Now he has good time. There's a little holding going on right there and throws it right in there. Nice job. Here's another good look at it here. Draw fake, freeze the backers, hold it right there. See that linebacker was frozen up inside. He can't get back into here. That's where the ball's going to be thrown. 14 yards, second and one coming up after this completion. Here's the handoff. First down, Iowa. Cedric Shaw. Yeah. And now Moeller and the Wolverines in deep trouble. Eight points. A touchdown and a two would tie it up. Slutsker down at the 18-yard line. See, in most of their offense in there's the coach with two or three tight ends, their whole game plan. Slutsker is a big part of their approach to moving that ball. First man off that sideline again is the coach. It's right out there behind that training staff. See, this also gives him the opportunity to evaluate his substitution situation rather than waiting for the trainers to come over and tell him what the problem is and how long he's going to be out. He can, he, he's already got his thought of what he's going to do. He's got his play call coming back now. Hey, I don't have a tight end. I'll come with this. Yeah, he's tough. He's a New Jersey guy. He's also a cheerleader. <laughs> He's the MVP, folks, this Iowa team today. First and 10, Iowa. Now the Hawks with a first down inside the Michigan 20. Late substitution by the defensive unit. Here's that unbalanced line, see. Derek Price, the tight end. Driscoll incomplete to Russell. You know, he got greedy. He had a back out there. They went to the unbalanced line formation again. They've been running toward the unbalanced side. They run the play action fake. They had Cedric Shaw out there in the flat all alone. He went for the big play, got a little greedy. This back was out here all by himself. They went to the tight end down the hole. Play action. See, they've been running down here. They make the fake. He comes out. He rolls out there, gets the block he needs. Just gets it over. See the right side of the screen? No one defensing him. Second and ten. Up. That's Ross Verba. We have flag on the Ross Verba. He's a pre-med student. Real smart guy. Opportunity to remind you about Monday night. 9 p.m. Eastern. Houston and Pittsburgh here on ABC Monday Night Football. Now second. 
down and the ball has been brought back to the 24 yard line. They need 15 yards for the first down. Driscoll fires high and incomplete. You know, that was a real nice read by Driscoll because Michigan changed up their coverage. They came with a weak zone, which you don't see very often. They went over to double on Jasper inside out. He read it and he went to the backside. He just threw it too high. He's throwing a number of balls too high today. Usually when you're doing that, you're not getting set up properly with your feet. Don Patterson, the quarterback coach, told me he needs a lot of work on his fundamentals here. But he's hit a couple of huge <laughs> plays here today against the Wolverines. Nothing wrong with the youngster's heart. Needs 15 Come yards on him. this third downer. And it's fourth. They came after him with the blitz, covered the corners really tight, backed them up with the safeties, gave away some underneath zone coverage. Didn't matter. Throw it incomplete. A lot of pressure on him that time. Kicking team comes off the sideline. Now at 12:57, if you were ever going to think about a fake, if you've seen anything in the movies that indicate that the Wolverines don't defend it too well, this would be the time. Jefferson Bates out of Irmo, South Carolina, will put it down here for Brian Hurley. On the other hand, a field goal and a touchdown and win the ball game for you. Block, blocked. Field goal is blocked and into the end zone. That was a low kick all the way. A gopher could have blocked that one. <laughs> no, that was instead, a low kick. Instead, it was a... Uh, it was it was a Wolverine and not a gopher, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Go block it. You believe that? 1249, we'll be right back. Now it was Tony Henderson who was able to block that field goal. Right in the middle of your screen. Low kick, he gets his hand up. Nice job. Tyrone Wheatley. Valhalla making the stop for the Hawkeyes here at the 1240 mark at Michigan up by eight 22 to 14. Who's he laughing at was he talking to one of the the, the Michigan linemen or was he talking with the referee. <laughs> you see him smiling. <laughs> I thought he was carrying on a conversation with a guy. He just whipped. Second and nine. Cooper's in motion. The toss. Bianca Batuka. And Bianca Batuka, who ran so hard for a touchdown into the arms of Porter. And here's the young man who could carry the load now in the fourth quarter. That's a 16 yard gain for Bianca Batuka. That was a real nice job of blocking by John Ritchie, the fullback. Follow the fullback as he goes in and picks up the linebacker right through the point of attack. Not an easy thing to do. He searches him, searches him. Pow! Makes contact right there, holds his own, creates a crease back up inside, then just good running skills, advances the ball. Look at this right at How'd you like to make this play, Brent? Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Look at that little move. He he has that base, he's feet apart all the time. He can make you miss. He's carried 11 times for 83 yards. Wheatley returns. Now it's Wheatley's turn. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you know, we've all documented Tyrone Wheatley electing to come back to get his college degree and not go to the NFL, but we may have discovered one of the additional reasons. You know, he's won the Big Ten 110-meter high hurdles last year, last spring, and he says that he has, has a lifelong dream, and he says he wants to pursue it. Believe it or not, he wants to see if he can have a good spring season in track for the Big Ten. He's going to go after the Olympics and try to make the U.S. Olympic squad for the 110 hurdles. That'd be some accomplishment. 11-10. Here he is. Up the middle. Cuts to the left. Wheatley finally brought down by Brett Chambers. What he has the ability to do, Wheatley does, is he runs that draw and he lets the offensive lineman set short 
and take the defender the direction. The offensive lineman right here will set short and take these defenders the way they want to go. Wheatley will just read it and run off that. See, now the defensive tackle went inside. He goes outside. Here comes Cooper 88 to block Diaco 45. First down, good execution. And the ball at the Hawks 45. Here's Wheatley, slips a tackle. Wheatley carries. Nice job there by Joe Marinero coming, pulled out there from the right guard spot, and Wheatley read it properly. In the first half, one time, he had that same cut, and he went outside the, the kickout block. That time he saw it and ran up underneath it. Second down, three. Offensive line has looked much better in the second half. Second and three. Here's Wheatley again for the first down. Again, another nice job there by Richie. Picked up the backside linebacker as he came running through. Running back saw the blitz. He just bounced it over there and, and found the crack for the first down. 105 yards on the day and his 42nd touchdown. Hey, it took a lot of guts for him not to go on into the NFL. You know that? That's a lot of money to turn down. Especially as a running back. Tougher for a running back to make that decision than I think somebody else. Michigan brings it on down to the 28-yard line with plenty of time still left here in Iowa City. They stick right with number six. They're just muscling them now. Just coming off the ball. Those defensive tackles are wearing down just a little. Four more yards for Mr. Wheatley. And remember, we've got a doubleheader next Saturday here on ABC. Notre Dame and Boston College. That's the Revenge Bowl. Oh, how Lou Holtz wants that one. Won't be able to get Tom Coughlin, though. He's hanging out in Jacksonville. There's your second half of the doubleheader. If you'd like to watch a couple of them, call your cable operators. Like Keith Jackson says, they'll take your money. Tim Biakabatuka now in. That time, good defensive play by Fahala, who has played extremely well here. That time, the linebacker, Baba Diaco, who got blocked the last time they ran that play, he said, not twice in a row. I'm going to make my play this time. Watch him take on the fullback at the point. Remember last time? Fullback, Richie won the battle. This time, he gets his pads down, straightens him up, stops him, then gets help from the backside. Nice, nice job by Baba Diaco. Wow. She's excited too. Isn't she? Having a good time. Third and six at the 24 for Collins and the Wolverines. It's been a muscle game. Now Collins will put it up for the Wolves. There's the first down. Nice it's hit. Toomer. Nice hit. Porter is the one who slapped him. You know, Porter is the center field on the Hawkeyes baseball team, and he's playing center field on the football team. That time, he didn't hit with a bat, he hit with the shoulder pads. Nice, nice hit. You know, he's been impressing today. And Toomer has taken some shots because of it. Going off a little slowly, isn't he? You bet. He took a lick. Ball is at the 14-yard line with this first down, and Toomer goes over to the coaches. Tyrone Wheatley's the running back. Battles for a couple of yards. Jeremy McKinney makes the stop for the Hawks. Boy, these Hawkeye kids have really, really played hard. And I think every time we've come in this stadium, we've seen these Hawkeye kids play like that. Got to give them a lot of credit. 7-22. The Hawks trail it by eight. It's 22 to 14. Second down and eight. The ball is at the Hawks 12 yard line. It's Wheatley. His second touchdown. Boy, you can see that coming from up here. Woo. 
got some fans coming down there to celebrate. To run over there, you've got to get a good block right here to get it pinned. That's Cooper, number 88. He blocks down. See, tackle pulls around, gets a hoop, grabs a hold. God, do kids use their hands today. My God. It's the swinging gate. Michigan brings it over. And now Remy Hamilton for the extra point. Right now, Wolverines up by 14. There's 15. Six fifty six to go. Wolverines twenty nine Hawkeyes fourteen. Welcome back to Iowa City home of the Hawkeyes who find themselves on the short end of a twenty nine fourteen count Michigan on the rebound after that heartbreaking loss a week ago and Tyrone Wheatley on the day with two more touchdowns. And his Michigan record now at 43 as number six has just walked in for the second time. Six minutes and 56 seconds to go here. And Remy Hamilton with three field goals will kick it off. Kicked a 30 yarder to put the Wolverines on the board first in this game. Iowa led 7 3 in the second quarter. And then Michigan regained the lead and they've been ahead ever since. One yard deep, Banks comes out. Banks with great speed to the 31-yard line. He really does flash, Brent. He was one of the most sought-after high school senior running backs in the country. And he shows why right there. He can really flash. We've seen a couple versions of Tyrone Wheatley here today. Early on, they jammed him up pretty good at the line of scrimmage, but... Like all outstanding running backs, he seems to get better and better as the game wears on. You know, think about that. Those fellows like Barry Sanders there with the Lions, Emmett Smith down with the Cowboys, Thurman Thomas, who's hurt, can't play against the Bears tomorrow. But games wear on, they get more carries, they get themselves into a rhythm, and they just get tougher and tougher. Now here for the Hawks. First and ten, Ryan Driscoll. He's done some good things under pressure here today. He'll have to put it up in the air now to bring the Hawks back. Hit on the release, and it's second and ten. Ty Law with coverage on the near side. They got on that unbalanced formation like they did in the last series of downs. Remember earlier I said he threw the ball deep, and the man was wide open in the flat. He should have thrown it to him. He would have run up for a big one. Well, they came back. Good call. They tried to do it. This time, Michigan defense took it away. It wasn't there. Good defensive adjustment. The kids saw it one time. You weren't going to fool them the second time. Second and ten coming out from their own 31 yard line. Russell, the motion tied in. Tried to pick him off, and number 28, Deion Johnson, goes diving for the low throw. Incomplete. He was trying to count his way into an interception there. It was close. When you throw the ball flat like that, it's deflected or anything like that, boy, it's a. Uh, Real risky throw. Well, the key here is that Slutsker, who had been their main receiver in the clutch, injured that ankle. He goes off to the Hawkeye sideline, and Driscoll is without his favorite target on this third and ten from the 31. Michigan like to get the ball back and see if they can pound in still another score. That's Guy, number one in motion. Over the middle, and it is complete to the fullback, Ken Call. Very close to a first down. Had good protection because, you know, that kind of a pattern takes time to develop. That was a check down. Now, you're, they're going to check the, him down. But Verba, the offensive left tackle right here, does a nice job. He has to come all the way out. Boom, he gets his hands out there properly. He's, he, now he ends up blocking another man. This allows the whole thing to happen. See that big hole in that zone? Gonna go for it anyway. The crowd didn't like the spot. You may have heard some booing. And Hayden Fry, he can't be worried about the officiating. He's got to be concerned with this fourth and short call here at the 630 mark. He's going for it anyway. Just 
Get it in there, coach. Good, one. Hayden Fry is very active in coaching his own offense. He still calls his plays and keeps him up late at night, coming up with all his new systems and new formations and new things that he's going to run each week. But the coaches say they learn something every week working for this guy. Derek Price out of Tempe, Arizona, number 89, brings the play in for the sideline. It'll be a tight formation here with Call and Shaw. Driscoll might as well keep it himself. It's just inches for the first down. He'll hand it off. First down, Hawkeyes, 618 to go. Yeah. Boy, good, aggressive, tough run. And that little guy, he can run yeah, inside yeah. as well. They're not little, he's 200 pounds. Go Hawks. All right. Hey, there you go. Okay, there you are. You're on live. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks grandma. I yeah. wanted to talk, talk to grandma back home. They started me young down here. And I he got her play. ticket. Grandma had to stay home. That's it. Oh, great move in the middle by the defense to get pressure on Driscoll that time. And he still picks up Russell for nine yards. We've watched a young quarterback grow in this ball game, you know, under pressure and didn't start out that smoothly in the first half. He's just gotten better and moving around. Here he is pedaling straight back. So he's looking to his left. That technique allows him to look left. Now he sees the pressure. He's being chased there by Trent Zinkowitz, number 76. First down, Hawks is called, busts through to the 40-yard line of the Wolverines. Here's a transfer from Colorado, number 31. Coaches really like him because he's a tough guy and he's a smart guy. Wasn't getting any playing time with the Buffaloes, so he came on over here to Hayden Fry, and looks like he can get a lot of playing time here. They're just disappointed he only has one year left, Brent. This year, that's it. Ball is at the Wolverines 40 yard line, and it's Driscoll again. Throws a swing to call, and a lot of room this time. To the 35, five more. Steve Morrison comes up with a play defensively and calls shaking his head that he couldn't shake number 36. See, Lloyd Carr is playing pretty loose zone defense right now. You watch him to change up. He'll change up and come with some kind of a man or a pressure defense. Impressive drive here by the Hawkeyes. Great coverage that time. Morrison, Morrison. draped all over Russell. It's good to see him playing 100 percent healthy. You know he missed seven games last year with a foot problem and back healthy playing right now. Good football player. Second team all Big Ten in 92 had a great year. Made 124 tackle. Morrison's first half interception set up the opening field goal of this game. Michigan could not turn it into a touchdown. A couple of times inside the 20 they've had first downs and they've settled for field goals. Inside lateral and in nothing but room. Call to the 28-yard line. That's that little there. shuffle pass they tried earlier, Brent. There is a football player. You look, at look at that. Blood, blood on the elbow. elbow. That's a clever play. It works if you don't get penetration. He will step over here and then come underneath as the quarterback goes back, and he'll just flip him the ball. It's like a delayed draw. The linebackers can't read it. Normally, the linebackers will hold until the quarterback passes the running back. In this case, he didn't. He handed it, he flipped it on, and runs upfield with it. Oop. Hayden Fry, he's pulling out everything. Filer and Banks are into the game now to block. And he gets the ball into Banks' hands. Banks to the 19-yard line. Tavian Banks from Bettendorf, Iowa. And Hayden Fry here against a defense that he suspects is just a little bit tired. With four minutes to go, he sends a little more speed out there. And Hayden wants this touchdown. It, no doubt about it. Coming down to the four-minute mark, it's 29-14. And Hayden's got the Hawks on the drive. They've got a nickel defense in there right now with five defensive backs. Shaw and he is slammed down. Gained a couple of yards. That was number 37, Jared Irons, coming up with still another stop. And it'll be third and one at the 19-yard line after that play by Irons. Three and a half minutes to go. 
call is met. No first down. Another fourth down play coming up for the Hawkeyes here. Holy man. That's a stone wall. What I run into a truck, he says. Iowa calls timeout. We're going to take a break. It's 325. When you come back, it'll be fourth and one for the Hawks. Canada. It's a land like no other, with a beer like no other. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Get smooth as ice. Football on ABC has been brought to you by the Optima True Grace card from American Express. Slick 50 engine formula, the world's number one selling engine treatment. UPS, the package delivery company, more companies count on. And the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice, Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Well, here today against Michigan, Iowa has already converted two fourth downs. This is fourth and two for the Hawks at the 325 mark. To stay alive, they need this one. Driscoll steps away from trouble. Driscoll buys time and throws for it. About that young man, Ryan Driscoll from Cedar Rapids. <laughs> Anthony Dean for eight yards. Again, showing that improved poise as he's grown through this ball game. Gets back, he has to scramble the right. There's pressure in there. He gets back. He wanted to throw it right now. Not there. He had pressure inside. He gets forced out a little bit nerd by Henderson, number 79. Now here comes Trevor Price. Good poise. The ball is at the Wolverines 12 yard line. 318 to go. Back in the shotgun for this look and Driscoll deflected. A diving attempt but it is incomplete. He wanted to throw that outside receiver screen and it was deflected. Darn near intercepted. Price might have landed on the ball. <laughs> Glenn Steele, number 81, making a rush defensively for the Wolverines here at the 313 mark. Here he is right here to the right side of your screen, number eight. See, the ball's deflected, and he charges for it. And I think what he did is land on the football. Ball was right underneath him when he hit the ground. Remember when we showed you that picture of Call, the fullback, with the blood dripping from his elbow for Iowa? Well, the reason why he wasn't in there a short time ago is the fact that the officials ordered him off the field so that they could tape up that wound. They're very strict on, on blood and uh, things of that nature in the NCAA, and of course they tightened up two, three years ago, and that's why he was not in there. Price now heads off for the Wolverines, and a reminder that if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country with John Saunders. We've got 313 to go, 29 to 14. And there you can see the bandage on that left elbow of the fullback. This is a 15th play coming for the Hawkeyes. They have a second and 10. They're down at the Wolverines 12 yard line. Wolverines lead it by 15 points. Driscoll back pedals drops it off in the middle. And the Hawks are inside the 10 yard line with that pass. Kent Cole was the receiver. Jared Irons making still another stop. And another Wolverine, I believe this is Glenn Steele, who's down at the 25-yard line. This has been a tough football game here in Iowa City this afternoon. You can see those braces on their knees. All the Michigan players, most, all the college players, most of them are, are wearing braces through the ball game, especially eight the big linemen, offensive and defensive play. linemen. Third down six from the Michigan eight. See that brace taped on right there? Still have good mobility, and they've been very effective. 
Left field, a defensive tackle, the Wolverine shaken up on that play. We'll take a break and we'll come back for the final 302. Hawkeyes with the ball and threatening. Michigan leads it 29 14. PageNet reaches the Michigan sideline. Three minutes to go, third and six. The ball at the Wolverines' eight yard line. Shaw is in motion. And didn't turn around in time. Incomplete. It'll be fourth and six from the eight. He slipped out of the backfield. And he didn't turn around again. Look Colorado and Texas. That's a major, major effort by Texas. Michigan State with a big win for Coach Perlis. Illinois beaten by Purdue in Champaign. Indiana comes back. After that whipping, they took at the hands of Wisconsin. Northwestern plays well, but comes up a two-point loser. And now here's another fourth down. They could be four for four if they could convert here. Driscoll, not this time. Goes over to the Wolverines at 248. It was Trevor Price who got in on Ryan Driscoll. Boy, Number eight brought the heat. Boy, he's lucky he's getting up after that hit. It's a blind hit coming from the backside because he was using a reverse pivot to make his play action fake, which you normally do on that kind of action, but you can't see the guy coming. And boy, did he take a shot. Wow. Now the Wolverines will see if they can put this one away. They've got 248. They'll try to mount a drive of their own. They moved the ball so well that last time out. Shea Foster is set in front of Wheatley coming out now from the eight yard line. Here's Mr. Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley He's on the left side. Tyrone Wheatley. Tyrone is across the 25 to the 28 yard line. First down, move the chains at the 241 mark. And a penalty marker is down on that side. Was there also a face mask? I think there was, Brett. Yeah. I think they got him right there at the end. He's really, I think he's improved his running in this ball game. Gotten back, gotten a groove, showing the toughness. Got some good blocks up inside there like that. He starts in there, Shea Foster leading a number 33. Gets a critical block at the point. Now look at that, little stutter step. Now it's up to the defensive people to get him out. Definitely got the face mask. So tack on the penalty yardage now. And for the day, look at that. 30 carries, 142 yards. Two touchdowns on the afternoon and not a bad backup in Timmy Mayakabatuka. I think Wheatley gets better the more he carries it. I've been around a lot of backs that do that too. They get better the more they carry it. He's got to carry it 25, 30 times a game. I obviously have had an echo in this booth. Yes, 41 to go now. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Coming out from the 42 yard line. This is Wheatley. Look at this hole. Patiently pick his way. He ran right off the Rod Payne's block, the center, and he was battling really hard with the defensive tackler. He set him up, and he just broke it back behind him. A lot of Michiganders want to see the Wolverines pop in another one. It's 29-14, 2.20 to go. Second down and two after that eight yard run. The ball is at midfield right now for Todd Collins, who stayed in and gone the distance. Young man from Walpole, Mass. They're going to come after him now. Here they come. And Wheatley into the middle of that defense. And let's check in with John Saunders on that Texas Colorado Donnybrook. John? Brent, Colorado against Texas, and the Buffs looked like they had it wrapped up, but a long touchdown and then a 47-yard field goal by Phil Dawson tied the game at 31 apiece. Rashawn Salam for Colorado is over 300 yards as they march for the game winner. Brent. John, that looked like one of your tee shots, man, moving right to left. <laughs> That Makovic has Colorado's number. Remember when he was in Illinois, they came in there undefeated and he beat him. Minute and a half now for the Wolverines. And Wheatley is wrapped up by Parker Wildeman. They've got about nine guys up inside that line of scrimmage right now trying to stop that run. Too many guys to block. Wheatley's asking the referee to take a couple of those guys off the field. 
Now the word from the Michigan sidelines is that Steele suffered a. Who are you liking that one, Coach? Well, you have to go with Pittsburgh. You know, Houston and has not been playing very well. They've been banged up. They haven't been able to replace the defensive people that they lost through free agency. The edge goes to Pittsburgh. They got nine people up there defying Michigan to throw the football right now. Florida, good football team. Texas A&M's undefeated too, right? That's 4-0 for them. Another big win for the Huskies. Miami comes back after the disappointment of a week ago, and here it is going to be the Wolverines. 1-14 to go. They're up 15, 29 to 14. Wheatley still on the field. Look at that. 105 yards. 6.2 average. Hawks push the line defensively. Wheatley tries to find it, swings to the outside. Wheatley's in a foot race, and Wheatley will step out of bounds close to the 20-yard line with a minute seven to go. Again, using that speed, he wanted to go up inside. It's all plugged up. He just accelerates and runs outside. They can't catch him. That's why he won the Big Ten 110-meter hurdles. Hey, how'd you like to be the running back coach at Michigan? Tyrone Wheatley and Bianca Batuku, two pretty good guys. Fred Jackson must really like that job. <laughs> 34 carries, 178 yards. After that 22-yard run, the ball is down on the Hawkeyes' 22-yard line with a minute seven to go. They're fouled up, lining up here. <laughs> Boy, they got single coverage up on top, Brent. Wheatley with a pair of touchdowns in the middle of that defense, and now the clock will run down inside of a minute. They're just defying him to throw the ball. That time, Amani Toomer was up there all by himself with one corner and a lot of yards to they run are, out. They're not going to throw it. No. There's no question that if they score, they'll do it just simply running it in against a tired defense right now. The Wolverine coaches want to keep that clock moving get the final seconds down and just get on out of here with a W Big Ten season underway ball is at the 18 yard line gonna flop on and that's gonna do it 29 to 14 a 15 point win for the Wolverines over Iowa so our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game are going to be Steve Morrison from Michigan. Did an outstanding job defensively. And Scott Slutsker, the tight end from Iowa, who unfortunately was banged up. And Chevrolet donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. For Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from Iowa, where the Wolverines have won it 29 to 14.